Hold fast, Scryer. It is through the will of Weejoss that you have gained the sight to view what I have to show to you. A story of bravery and valor, friendship and betrayal, determination and despair, awesome and adventurous. But why did the witch goddess bring you here? What purpose could she have to redirect your energies to me? Perhaps this will be a story of warning to you or a call to action. Not too long ago in the storied city of Waterdeep, deep beneath the city's surface, was the ruins of the largest wizard's tower. And at the center of it, Halaster Blackcloak. Six heroes were called forth to finally rid the city of the dark influence of Halaster and investigate the damage he had done to the weave. This is their saga. I bid thee greetings, barbarians and wizards, clerics and warlocks. I am Patrick, known the beaks of birds and in other crystal balls as Patty Shakes, and I am the game master for this story. This is session six of Dungeons and Dragons, fifth edition, Waterdeep, Dungeon of the Mad Mage. This is an awesome adventure brought to you by Vorpal Tales. You can find Vorpal Tales in a lot of places on the internet. Of course, we are on Twitch right here, right now. Consider giving us a follow or subscribe. Check out Twitter, where we tweet daily at Vorpal Tales. Uh, Facebook and Instagram, where you get great pictures of all our cast and GMs outside of the tabletop. A website, VorpalTales.com, where you can get all the latest news about everything we are doing and see our up-to-date calendars. A Patreon, where if you feel so inclined, you can toss a coin to us in order to make more, better, and a Vorpal Tale your content. Finally, a Discord where you can come hang out with us awesome humans and discuss all kinds of topics or play video games with us. I would like to thank Wizards of the Coast for making an amazing module for us to live in for a while. Also, Roll20 for being our virtual tabletop and platform for our players to roll their dice and see the monsters that look to strike them down. Additionally to N8Mid for all the fantastic work he does. And my newest shout out goes to Vinslept, a wonderful YouTube channel that has amazing music to set your adventure to. And now, dear viewers, meet our intrepid adventurers who look to rid the world of the evil ways of Halos or Black Cloak. Please state your name, where people can find you on the internet, and who you will be playing tonight. I think I'm first. My name is Dwayne. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi. Tonight I will be playing the fat dragonborn bard, Densic Rothanel. John. Hi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just looking it up. My apologies. Uh, I, I, my name is John, and I will be playing Sharask, the uh, lizard, lizard, uh, lizard folk uh, ranger. Hey, everybody. I'm Ever. My pronouns are they, them. And tonight I will be playing Nim, who we have switched from cleric to druid for purposes unknown. No, I'm just kidding. Um, because it is more accessible for me as a player. And an awesome DM will make accommodations for you if you have any form of disabilities that you might need them for. And in my case, I had these druid cards, and it just makes it more accessible Baller. for me to enjoy D and D. Shout out to those cards, by the way. Like I had them for every class for like when I play in person. And yes, I can agree they are super awesome. Very helpful. Oh yeah. Hey everybody, I'm Pinky, and tonight I'll be playing Izzy, the Eldritch Knight fighter, who last episode uh, bought friendship for 40 gold coins. A price well worth it. One and can only hope. I'm Devin, you can find me online at Sword of Sullied, and I play Shadow, the rogue, who knows that that was way more expensive than it should have been. <clears throat> You'll notice we are without our wonderful warlock slash sorcerer slash wizard slash everything, Cal. Uh, uh, he will not be able to join us tonight, but uh, we'll look forward to seeing him next week. Perfect. All right. Thank you, adventurers. Now, before we forget ourselves and escape for a little while until a realm of magic and fantasy, here in the world today, many people are struggling with very real matters and combating their own monsters. November is a month that brings awareness to many important things, including diabetes awareness, and is one of the most common chronic conditions in the USA. Make sure to constantly monitor yourself in order to catch complications early. Epilepsy awareness, as one in 10 people will experience a seizure in their life. 
Be sure to learn what to do in such a situation, such as not restraining them, staying calm, and if necessary, calling 911. And National Native American Heritage, where we honor the rich culture of the first people of this land. The very important Black Lives Matter movement is also still going on. This is the most important period in time we are living in, and we ask you to educate yourselves on topics you may be ignorant to and work with your fellow humans to better the world. Remember, things are only impossible until they are not. Before you gaze further into the story of these adventures, allow our druid to remind you what they have already conquered and overcome. Excellent. Don't forget it's Friday the 13th. <laughs> Spooky woo. So if I'm reading this right, the last date we were gaming was the 27th of October. Feels like forever ago. Is that right? Did we not play uh, last week? It should have been the 6th. No, yeah, we no. played yeah. last week. It was the 6th. Yeah. Did you get your notes messed up again? <sighs> I took notes on Steve's computer. Oh, no. <gasps> not a problem. Not a problem. I can remedy this. Not a problem. Give us one second, watchers, as I will pull up the recap online. Get the recap. <laughs> As ever keeps having to fail. <laughs> Not at all. This is what happens when you journey across the land. You use different technologies. All right. Perfect. If you don't mind, or do you want do you got it ever or do you want me to take it? I just re-downloaded it. <laughs> Perfect. All right, I'll let you do it then. Excellent. All right. On the sixth of November in the year twenty twenty, but not for our characters, I don't think. The Vorpal Vagabonds discuss our plan to decrown the self-proclaimed King of Goblins, Yek the Tall. Nim and Izzy have their own brainstorm, and an idea hits Nim. A sleeping cookie made by Izzy. Izzy goes back to the herbalist that sold the silver hibiscus to Sprouting Hops, and she is convinced to sell Izzy a sleeping ingredient for knocking out the bugbear guards. Our halfling Izzy goes into a goblin kitchen and finds a new friend. The lizard man Sharask and frees him from his indentured servitude to the goblins by pay paying 40 gold for him, which the goblins say they'd have taken 20. Our group enacts our plan, knocking out the bugbears. Shadow assassinates the fake king and the goblins are grateful. Our revenant ally, Halith, accompaniment takes out his vengeance on the captive dwarf. Nim attempts to convince Halith that the dwarf deserves some last words. But he only calls the dwarf a liar, and Cal encourages the revenge. One murderer down, and two to go. Shadow and Cal inspect Yek's bedroom, and Shadow loots it for all that he can. Shadow is actually in such good spirits that he shares the spoils with his vagabond friends in greater measure than he normally would. He maintains the circlet for himself, wearing it in hopes it will attune to him. We continue on with the blessing of the goblins as goblin friend and they point us down the hall to the rest of the level. We make our way down the hall, and it's lined with frescoes that move by magic. Shirask touches it, but nothing happens, and we travel on. We encounter bugbears, part of Xanathar's guild. They ask for a password, and Shadow gives a guess. Our tabaxi ventures closer, and the entire hall between us and the bugbears is trapped with pressure plates. Distance combat ensues as Shadow verbally guides us through the trap-riddled floor. Most of our crew successfully makes our way over the traps, some with assistance. Izzy, a halfling, throws Nim, the elf, fully across. The battle continues with greater ease as we edge ever nearer to the enemies. Perfect. A wonderful recap. Thank you. I, yes. I feel it was full of spooky woo. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, spooky woo everywhere, you might say. Um, as is want to be found in a mad mage's dungeon. So yes, uh, you had actually uh, just pushed up a little bit. Uh, your wonderful uh, friend Cal had cast a fog cloud and then fearlessly charged into it uh, to be lost to sight from all of you. Uh, you're not quite sure what lays beyond the fog, but... Uh, you know that that's where the enemies were attacking you from, and uh, we'll. I, I can't, did we have initiative up? Oh, let's see. I think we did. I think it saved it because roll twenty is baller cool. like that. 
So I only see Shirask, not the rest of us, though. Yeah, I don't see anybody else. Don't worry, I've got the full list. No worries. Like you can't in the initiative tracker or like on the map. In the initiative, initiative tracker. tracker. Okay, no worries. Yeah. I got the. I have the full initiative tracker here. I was gonna say we have the, all the numbers up a little bit. Uh, Nim, it would have been your turn. That's right. I remember this. I remember. I remember putting this this weight on you. And oh, you God. were like, wait, yeah, no, please, that. no. And I'm like, yes, wait, you, no, you have no. a whole <laughs> week to think of the perfect thing. So what is the perfect spell and or action you're going to cast in order to completely solve the situation? You have a whole week to think about it. <laughs> How close am I? Uh, you are in the back. So you're pretty far away from where you saw the enemies. You are, I believe you are here. So you are 125 feet away because that black box right there was 120 feet. I'm thinking Moonbeam. Oh. If it'll reach. If it'll reach. I've got my handy dandy cards here. <clears throat> Moonbeam has range of 120 feet. <laughs> then then that is that is but, my, uh, my plan okay so you're gonna try to put it in the doorway where you saw people yes okay so a silvery beam of pale light shines down in a five foot radius uh, when the creature enters the spell for the first time or starts their turn in it. Okay. So uh, you cast the spell. We'll see what happens. Rolled. Oh, it's a it's constitution save, DC 15. Yes, and... which they'll make uh, at the start of their turn or if they uh, move into it. Ah, okay. Yeah, so it doesn't happen immediately when you cast it. It has to wait until their turn to apply. If it hits um, 12 radiant damage. So it'll be, we'll make it like this pinkish color. You put it there where that pink square is. Right, that's where you're aiming for. Can you see that pink square? No, the map is uh, darkened in that area. I can move my character uh, over to look at it though. Nope, all good. Leave oh, the okay. character there. <laughs> uh, I, have put down a, I have put down a pink square where uh, you, you would have where you last saw people standing. <clears throat> I'll trust you. I mean, you're the DM. Yes. You wouldn't screw us over, right? Not not right? like that. Not like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you like to do, do anything with your bonus action or movement? I am going to move forward a bit. Um, okay. Up to the next trap area. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. All right. It's the bad guy's turn. They'll do something. Uh, let's see, check one thing. Oh, yeah, that'll work. Uh, okay. Izzy, it's your turn. Okay. 5, 15, 20. Okay, I can't do it. I stand next to Nim. Okay. As he kind of looks up to, to Nim. You want me to throw you again? Well, uh, you, you did it so well last time. I. Sure, why, why not? Yes! All right, give me an athletics check, Izzy as you attempt to throw Nim across the trap. Okie dokie. And just to make sure I make it, I'd like to use one of my votes from last week. Sure. And that's an additional D20? Yes, so you'll be running, rolling with advantage. Okay. <laughs> uh, wow, a 27 does it. Uh, so yeah, very easily and almost kind of last time you kind of had to fireman carry Nim a little bit and then almost like 
uh, suplex them over the trap, just kind of get the, enough momentum going to get them over the 10 feet uh, that is the trap. And this time it's more of just the, you, you kind of just push them to the ground on very unceremoniously and then just double pick up like a duffel bag and throw them across the trap. Uh, you make, you, you fly pretty well for a half elf uh, and you land safely on the other side right here. It's the ears, they help. <laughs> very, very aerodynamic, yes. I love uh, it. But yes, so uh, yeah, that would have been your action. So you have a bonus action and movement. Um, My movement ends at 25, so I won't, I don't know, will I have enough oomph to go across the barrier myself or no? Uh, sure. Uh, no, that, you'd, you'd yeah. well, actually, you know what? I'll let you make a uh, athletics check, another athletics check, to see if you can use the last bit of your movement to kind of leap over this trap and land next to uh, Nim. Cool. Thank you kindly, sir. Because we'll say you kind of did this all in like a running start kind of thing. Just ran through Nim, and you're going to use the momentum from that to leap across 18. That puts me at 18, yeah. Perfect. Yep, you land right next to Nim. It's kind of one of those like all in one motion throw and then use that momentum, just kind of carry you and you leap over the trap as well. Kind of dust yourself off a little bit. <laughs> that was easy. She, she, she just looks at, at Nim. <laughs> yes, the, cre- the, creature, the, the creature half your size is tossing you around like a, li- a, a literal rag doll. It feels so small. You're my friend now. <laughs> Don't ever leave me. Uh, okay. It is... Bad guy's turn. They'll do a thing. <clears throat> it is Cal's turn. You guys can't see Cal. He, he does a thing. Uh, in the fog cloud, you just hear a large... It sounds like a flurry of flapping wings and the calling of thousands of crows and ravens and uh, that's his turn Sharask the lizard folk I will use um, I'm going to use spike growth and I'm going to instead of putting it where it is now I would like to recast it and put it uh, at the doorway going back if that's possible. Uh, So kind of going into where they disappeared into? Yes. Okay. Like you... Uh, Can it... Like it has a 150 foot... Yeah. Or 120 foot radius? Yes. Or 120 foot casting? So can I get it a and little like can I get it back to where I saw the edge of the door was or the edges was? <clears throat> uh, sure. So you uh, from there you you cast you're about to cast it and as you're shaping the magic through the weave and pulling the elements of uh, earth and trying to grow these spikes and calling upon uh, the the nat- nature itself uh, where you're trying to p- place it you feel that the earth around it has changed and there's no longer ground there to grow the spikes on. Do I, do I still use this lot? No. So like this is as you're casting it and you're able to pull back the magic before the slot is expended. All right. Um, that's my action. I don't have anything for my bonus action. I think I'm going to move 5, 10, 15, 20... 20 feet up to here and then uh, that'll be my turn okay it's a bad guy's turn he's going to do a thing Oops, wrong button. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Okay. Other bad guy's turn. He's going to do a thing. Shh. 
Shadow, your turn. Uh, I'm going to uh, run and jump over this trap. Okay, give me an acrobatics check or athletics, whichever one you're more. I'm assuming acrobatics for me. Yeah, acrobatics. <laughs> <clears throat> it's almost like I'm rogue, not a paladin. Almost. Oh, 24. You're good to go. Right. You kind of do like a, uh, get almost like a gymnast. You do a running start and you back tuck over the, uh, over the trap. All right. So that puts me there. And uh, I still can't see any of the enemies from here, right? Correct. You're still in the fog cloud. Uh, then I'm going to, since that was uh, using uh, the cat's grace, the double mm -hmm. movement, uh, I'm then just going to use my extra movement to climb along the wall 20 more feet to get to the edge of that cloud. So you're going to step out of the cloud or you're going to stay in the cloud? Uh, I'm still in the cloud, but that's okay. the furthest I can get to the edge of the cloud, right. at least. As so you're in the cloud, <clears throat> you're kind of like, it doesn't do any damage, but these ravens kind of rush past you and you get a beak across your cheek. Um, it feels like there's a, what did we determine it was called? A murder of ravens, is that correct? Yeah. We looked it well, up. It was no, it was a, it's murder of crows. Murder of crows. Murder of crows. Yeah. It's a, uh, Oh, uh, I forgot. Unkindness a... or a conspiracy? Is conspiracy, yeah. yeah conspiracy. Yes. Right. yes. There is a there is a conspiracy of ravens in this fog fog cloud. In fact, this fog cloud is slowly becoming more raven than fog. Hmm. Densick, your turn. Oh. Oh, oh, that was great. I love it. Uh, Densick will, will move up to the edge of this your trap to get some better eye time. Okay. Uh, as you... <clears throat> as you step forward here, there is another trap. Oh. There is. There is. Does. Wow. Probably not. Does a 12 hit you? No, it does not. Okay. Oh, wait, there's... I forgot it shoots too. Uh, does a 19 hit you? That does. Okay. Uh, take one piercing damage, mm -hmm. and then give me, a, give me a constitution saving throw. <clears throat> 13. 13. Not, not great. Not great. I'm going to be taking some poison damage. Uh, I rolled minimum, though, so take four poison damage. And am I poisoned? No, you are not poisoned. Okay. You just take poison damage, yeah. And you now, you're now you now able to share that information. As you see Densic get pelted with darts, he's like, hey, guys, there's a trap right here. Seems to be a trap. Alrighty, so you're at the foot of that next trap. You're about to enter the fog cloud. Would you like to do anything? Uh, yes, I am going to chuck a bolt, a fire bolt. Okay. Make into an attack the fog. roll. Blindly. Make an attack roll. It will be a disadvantage. Uh, twelve. Twelve. Uh, <laughs> You, you hurl your fire bolts through the fog and you it kind of illuminates and uh, reflects the fog as it travels through it. You lose sight of it and then you listen and you hear the sound of it. Uh, you hear the sound of uh, uh, fire splashing up against rock. Do we see any shadows like as it flies uh, you through? Do, you see you, you see some shadows of birds, uh, but no, no humanoids. Aha. Uh, who's next up in initiative? Uh, it'll be Nim. Or are we back on the turn? <laughs> okay. Then I will turn to Nim and say, "Oh, something 
along the lines of come elf brethren fam come elf fam <laughs> you were born for greatness and I use my bonus action to give her uh, uh, give them some inspiration then sick invents the term the phrase I got you fam <laughs> <laughs> I got you, fam. <laughs> and do oh you God. feel inspired? And you're like, you know what? For Shizzle, he does have my. He does have me. <laughs> that is a uh, D8. Oh, it's hilarious. Alrighty, Nim, it's your turn. Hmm. You can feel the effects of your moonbeam, but uh, as part of your casting and part of your spell. You don't feel that any creatures have entered its area. Curses. What do I want to do with that? Oh, you can maintain concentration on it if you'd like. Uh, which is just that it doesn't cost you anything. That's just saying, like, yes, I want the spell to keep being there. I think I'd like to do that, actually. Okay. Just so then you have your you have your whole you have your whole turn available to you. you got action bonus action your movement. Oh dang! Hmm. Do I need water to use tidal wave? It doesn't look like it. Uh, let's really quickly double check the the components of that spell. You conjure up a wave of water that crashes down on an area within range. The area can be up to 30 feet long, up to 10 feet wide, and up to 10 feet tall. The material components of that spell is just a drop of water. So yes, you could reach for your, uh, you could reach for your water skin real quick. Well, you could spit if you wanted to, or instead of being disgusting, you could reach for your water skin (laughs) and just lightly dab out a drop of water. And as you pull from it, it just becomes strings and the drop multiplies exponentially and all of a sudden as far as a drop it's a string of water and then it's you know a gallon of water and then you keep moving rocking the motions of the ocean and <laughs> whoosh, throw out a tidal wave I, I think I'd like to move forward a bit more before I use it okay if that's doable it does it does have a 20 120 foot range just like your previous spell did. So if you wanted to cast it like on top of where your moon beam is and then have it shooting back, you could. Yes, that is what okay. I'd like to do. And I don't think I'm going to use spit. Nim's a little like, eh, you know. So uh, yeah, I'm going to pull out that drop of water and do the thing. That you Say shall so approves that you didn't, you know, reduce water down to spit. <laughs> I am Katara. <laughs> My water <laughs> oh, did, oh, I was gonna say, did you want to get some sweat and you know start cutting your way out of jail? I mean, not yet. <laughs> okay. Well, you'll we'll save that for later. All right. So yes, perfect. So you cast out a wave, and, and you wanted it right on top of where Moonbeam was again. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So like I said, and you finally release it, and instead of it going straight out in front of you. And your friends kind of who had been keeping an eye on you behind, like in front of you, they kind of brace for a second, but the tidal wave just ghostly moves through them. And then you hear the rushing sound of the wave and it crashes and you can feel that it hits something solid. Hopefully not a wall. Hopefully. Anything else, Tim? Gonna... Move forward to the next trap area. Alrighty. <clears throat> All right. Izzy. Ooh. Do I want to keep on brand? Just yeet Nim across it again? Or do I just want to just go across on my own? <sighs> Up to you. I mean, I kind of want to stay on brand, but at the you same do time, not owe me a yeet. Friends who eat to together say. stay together. <laughs> exactly. I'm trying. I'm trying to, you know. Well, 
Like, I mean, the audience says to yeet the nim. I should yeet, yeet the nim. Do I have your consent to, ne to yeet you again? I mean, you can say no. You can say no. Don't feel pressured. Yes. It's okay. <laughs> I, I imagine I by this point... Without consent. I imagine by this point, <laughs> Nim moves forward to each trap and then just kind of does her, does their thing and then does that thing where they just kind of turn around and look at Izzy and there's like pre-cannonball formation. <laughs> <laughs> like like a kid, instead of the up with the grabby hands for lift, it's the down with the grabby hands for lift. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I'm, I'm going to have Izzy yeet the Nim again. Yeet! All right, give me an athletics check. Eighteen. 18. Looking good. You successfully yeet the nim. And that was only fifteen, so I technically have ten more feet of movement. So I could potentially yeet myself. Yes, you must. Yeet, you must uh, follow the yeet up with another yeet. All <clears throat> right, and it's also athletics, correct? Yes. <clears throat> Unless for some reason you want to use acrobatics, which I don't imagine your character would. Another eighteen. Perfect. You land right next to nim. Kind of. Uh, catch them a little bit as they're doing one of those things where they're falling back on their heels. You're like, nope, 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 come on. All right, now we're good. By now, Nim's hair is kind of frazzled and one of her ears is like flopping a little bit more than it should. Or one of their <laughs> ears. Wow, I just misgendered my own character. <laughs> so <laughs> they're like, uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. All right. Uh, that was action and movement. Did you have a bonus action with you, Izzy? Um, no. All right. I'm good. Sharask, it's your turn. I will move myself forward 10 feet. All righty. Around the edge of the like, trap. I would like to make a jump. Do you like to use acrobatics or athletics? Uh, Dex is my favorite kind, so acrobatics, if you would. Perfect. 20. All good in the hood. You're able to successfully uh, kind of do one of those things where you're like, I could just try to jump over this, or I could do one of those like run jumps off the wall on the side, and that's what you do. You're able to get okay. successfully over the trap. Totally Prince of Persia in this stuff. That's, that's yes. fantastic. Yes. Love that game. All right, so hard, hard, say hard, 10 hard. more feet of movement. So that brings you up to 20. 10 All right, more you have, entered the, you have entered the fog cloud. I would, I would like to go 10 more feet, and okay. uh, I'll take... I'll take two pot shots and see, uh, and just kind of listen and see if I hear anything. Okay, give me uh, two rolls of disadvantage, because you're in the fog cloud. Uh, a 13 and a 22 alright so uh, pull out the hand crossbow uh, shoot it quick re uh, quick reload shoot and uh, you listen and you hear the sound of crossbow bolts smashing against uh, stone alright thank you very much that has been my turn All right, perfect. Shadow. Uh, I'm going to continue out of the fog cloud. Okay. And take a quick look around as I'm doing so. Do I see anybody or anything? You do not. And if you were to come here uh, at the edge, uh, right, if you're kind of like looking through Nim's moon beam at this time. You notice that right here, a wall has been is that is now it looks like it's just like a solid wall dead end i know the lighting okay. does not portray that but uh do i see crossbow bolts in the ground yeah you yeah and you actually heard them kind of like whiz, whizzing through the uh fog and you do see on the ground like <clears throat> uh like you know some sticks uh some goose feather the steel the steel uh arrowheads Okay, I see them on the ground though, in front of or in front of that wall though. Yes. Okay, I was just making sure it was real. 
Um, okay. Uh, random question, but that circlet, you said it would take 15 minutes to attune, so does that mean I'm attuned? We're, we're getting very close to it. Okay. Um, I'm going to just quick inspect that the wall is like a full wall. Yep, you can pat it up and down. Uh, give me a uh, investigation check real quick to kind of give it a more a, a more thorough look. Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. Uh, pretty solid, and you cannot find some way to open it from this side. There doesn't seem to be a a lever, a a, 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 a knob, a switch. It doesn't seem like there's a conventional way or way you can find of, of opening whatever fail-safe they used to okay. put it on this side. Then I'm going to back up a little bit, say, uh, into the fog cloud, guys, they threw up a wall, and I'm just going to keep looking around to see if there's anything useful, like this, a switch against <laughs> the wall here, or... Yeah, just against that. As you say that, um, the fog cloud dissipates, and there's no cow. You do see a large raven come down from the ceiling and land on uh, Nim's shoulder. And it looks directly at uh, Densik. Where did our friend go? Um, Cal is, is, is that you? Just kind of nestles its head into you. Oh, he's so sweet. Oh, I'm taking that as a yes. That was really weird. Um, I give him a nut. As you approach it and he and you hold out the nut, it goes for the nut and then quicker than you can move, just bite your finger. I pull out a strip of jerky and give it to it. <laughs> it kind of just looks at you. Very hesitantly takes the jerky. Okay. Yeah, that, looks, that seems like cow. Denzik, maybe he has a nut allergy. You don't know. It, this this seems some kind of spooky woo. I I don't I don't know how I feel about this. Okay. Uh, so where where to now, friends? Well, I'm just gonna check and see that there's no way that they have over here to turn off the traps out in this area. That we're gonna have to jump again. Yeah, e easily enough, you uh, can tell that there is not a trap turning off mechanism on this side. Bugger. Well, this is unfortunate because it's very, very hard to get my fat ass over these <laughs> squares. I can throw you. Well, uh, uh, now, now, now that you're not in combat, uh, you can all help each other to easily enough make it over these traps oh, oh, without I was thinking, triggering them. I was thinking just standing away and just trigger them until they run out of arrows at worst case scenario. In the uh, in the heat of combat, it would have been. It's that's why you have to make the the checks. But uh, now that you're not in the heat of combat, you, you, all working together, you can easily uh, make it over the traps together. So this is purely player question. Uh, Tiffany, what's your strength? Uh, let's see. Uh, 16 modifier with three. Want to try and knock down a stone wall? <laughs> Do I ever? <laughs> what kind of, you have a long sword, right? Yes. You look at your long sword, you look at the stone wall. Man, I'm going to make this thing dull and unusable before I even make a dent in that wall with a sword. I have a shield. If I, if, if I had a war, if I had a warhammer or 
a mall or any blunt <laughs> kind of any kind of blunt instrument sure but you're really nice specifically designed for cutting down foe's longsword no you're gonna nick that up and it's gonna be completely hammer unusable hammer and pythons to crack it open you look at the hammer and pittons that come with a burglars or a climbers kit and you're just like this isn't destruction meant this is secure a pitten in a rock wall meant this would need like to bust through a rock wall you would need some uh, especially designed tool meant for destroying rock or a spell of some sort that specifically molded or destroyed rock okay then let's just go back We climbed over all those traps. There yeah. was a corridor to the south, if I do remember correctly. And I think to the east, too. What if... What if I used Entangle to break apart the rock? The spell would not find purchase. Uh, just double check the spell. That's with an N. It's um, normally an attack, but creative spell. Yeah, this? because because it uses it sprouts from the ground, so you would try to sprout it from the ground, but the wall would prevent any growth. Mm. So it just kind of sprout on either side of it, and then it doesn't these the 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 plants and growth that comes from it doesn't attack. It's just kind of like. Uh, Restraining and difficult terrain. It's not like sentient that can attack a wall. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I tried, guys. <laughs> I'm coming back for you, wall. I'm coming back for you. Do we want to go check out the rest of this place? Yes, we must keep mm-hmm. pushing forward. Indeed. What about you, Calberti? What about you? Do you want to go adventure the rest of... Oh, this is looks, my friend. I probably shouldn't it, be talking to him like that. Yeah, it looks back of... It looks back the way you guys came. just goes, ah! Fair enough. I do have speak with animals. I know this, but um, this is entertaining. <laughs> so... I like it. For now. <laughs> Unless it's necessary, and then which I will cast it should anyone ask. <laughs> well, I I guess go back the way we came and hope for a path. Seems okay. to be the most sensible move. Uh, so yes, you're able to move back down and. You get back to where you originally had your crossroads. Hmm. Well, this sucks. Did we ever figure out what the small alcove is? No, we haven't looked down here yet. Over here. Although, uh, if uh, I could get a Nim to heal me. Oh, yes. Yes, I can do that. Um, player... Nim, as you're, as you're about to... Uh, let's give you time to look through your spells a little bit to determine which spell you want to use to heal. Um, as you are reaching out your hands on either side of Shadow's head to... Uh, give him some of the divine light of Seychellus. Uh, you, your eyes kind of roll back into the back of your head, which this does not freak you out, Shadow, as you know spellcasters do weird stuff when they cast spells. Um, but Nim, you, your eyes roll back into the back of your head, and you start having a vision, and Seychellus appears before you in the form of a as, as a form of the of an ocean wave that seems to just crest forever, never breaking. 
Nim, my child. Yes, oh deep one. Your love for me is abundant and it honors me greatly how well you have worshiped and served me. But in order to set you free, in order to pursue who you truly are, both of your halves, sea and land, I release you from your vows as cleric, but I still give you the powers of my domain. And you feel as the vision starts to fade, that wave finally breaks and washes over you. And you feel Seychellus's love. If any, after you heal Shadow, all your spell slots will go back up to full. And uh, you fully embrace the ways of the earth and, and sea and combine them into the pursuit of pureness of, of the world. The balance of both halves. You feel you are, while Seychellus will still look over you, love you, protect you, guide you, you are no longer bound to the tenets and oaths of being a cleric of Seychellus. He has set you free in order to pursue who you are. It was beautiful, Patty. Well, thank you. <laughs> and now you may cast whatever spell it is you wanted to heal Shadow, and you will just immediately get back the spell slot. So just heal him for whatever your highest spell slot is, and then you get it back. Third level cure wounds. Wow. If you want to, if you want to, if you if you if you want to metagame it, just heal him for whatever your highest spell slot is, because you're gonna get it back immediately here. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Does anyone else need healing, or is it just? This kitty kit over here. I have many hit points. Er, I am very strong. I do not need said. Uh, what, are, what, are, what are you doing to him? You're laying your hands on either side of his head. My Blood does not bleed from that reaching. one. Does does this help him? Are you massaging his temples? Uh, no. I am, Does I'm he using, have a headache? No, I'm sure ask as many headaches. No, I'm using mad magic. Yes. Oh, oh, magic. Okay, I, I understand now. Okay, okay, okay. Looks like he healed for 19 shadow. Yeah, that's enough for full. Thank you. Perfect. I am uh, going to cast healing word on myself. Okay. Because I am slightly bruised. Bruised but not broken. Uh, a second. For nine. Alrighty. Okay. Alright, so you're back at your intersection. You've got uh, two paths that lead east and a path that leads south. You came from the west. Oh, oh, I know. We can um, close our eyes and just spin around with our hands pointed in a direction. And then we just keep spinning until we stop. And then whatever direction our finger is pointing is where we go. And I start sneaking south. Hey, where are you as you, you take As you're about to take your first step south, Halith uh, points to uh, this, this path to the east, and he just goes... One of my party is that way. How do you know? His friendship and senses Shadow are turns tingling. right back around and goes to the east. Ever since I've taken on this form, I just, I can sense them. I know when they are close. And this one is close. Your party members, um, are they friends? No, they are murderous cowards who would stab one of their own in the middle of the night and leave them for dead. Mm. So we kill them. Treacherous dogs. No, no, no. he kills them. We you help. kill. 
I okay, will be we doing have... the killing. Okay, so you, friend, I am going to help you kill them. I will not need so you your can help. kill them. I am going to help you oh, so he, that you can kill that specific help, person. Okay. I will only need you to take care of if they have somehow allied themselves with some of the evils of this dungeon. Otherwise, okay. I shall be the one who deals the final blow. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes. I was just thinking that you kill that specific person. I kill everything around them. Perfect. We have an agreement. Okay. All right. Shadow, you're going to lead down the way he pointed? Mm-hmm. Stealthy All right. down the hall. All righty. Give me a stealth check, and then give me a perception check. All right. A 19 for perception and a 15 for stealth. There we go. Those are my rolls. A four and a five, or four and a three. Okay. Uh, perception, there's no traps. 15 stealth. You know you could be quieter, um, but as you're approaching uh, kind of the end of the true corridor and it turns into kind of break shift, makeshift tunnels, uh, you're stepping on loose rock and gravel and you know, the average person wouldn't hear you, but you are making some noise. There. You get kind of to this uh, juncture right here where it kind of splits to the north and south. And Hal just kind of stands right here. This way. They are so close now. I just quietly peek into this room just to make sure that there's nothing in here that might turn around and get us in the back. Oh, okay. Sure. Just to uh, see. Yeah, yeah, of course. Totally. Definitely makes sense. Uh, as you look into this room, it looks like it's been like this, kind of like along this edge right here. It's been caved in. It used to be a bigger room, clearly. Uh, but there's been some damage that occurred here. Um, and these, there's a the tunnel that you're coming from, and then you can see one up towards the corner over here. There seems to be another another tunnel over there. Um, these have definitely been makeshift, kind of either burrowed by some creature or you know, whoever. If someone maybe like long, long ago, someone was in this room when it collapsed, they might have tried to you know tunnel out that kind of okay. thing. Okay, but nobody's in it right but, now. So yeah, if we pass through, right nobody's going to be okay. That's what I was checking out. So now yeah, you do you do notice a door to the north, but there's nobody in this room right now. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to let everyone, you know, do my signals and then just be like. This way. One day. One day you'll take the time to learn to teach them Thieves Camp. At least enough to be like good, bad, run away, you know. <laughs> okay. And quietly down this right, tunnel. All right. I know uh, that's sign language, but I don't speak it yet. I gotta learn from my girlfriend. I, I, it, twi it, it twists I and turns, and uh, you can actually keep going, keep going, following it. And you kind of get, and it develops back into actual corridors again. Okay. And at this, at this point, uh, Halif is the one leading the way. And just like, yeah. I can sense, I can sense her as clear as I can see her. Is that she's standing right in front of me? And he goes up here to the north. And uh, as you enter this hall right here, all like every square inch of wall is covered with paintings um, of wizards. And they all seem to be succumbing to some sort of madness, all of them varied or being transformed into hideous abominations. Um, and it's just painting after painting after painting after painting, all of them. To play, display something slightly different, but not no less horrific than the previous one. And then Halith stops right here. She is just around the corner. 
then we just we bring the rest of the party over. Exactly. It is Midna. I can sense her. She was a cleric. She tried to pass herself off as a fellow cleric of mine of Joaquin, but is truly a cleric of the evil god Shar. Shar, the goddess of loss and darkness, death and trickery. Whereas my god, Joaquin, is the, a good goddess, a goddess of life. This one stands for all, stands against all that mine stands for. I, am, I, I believe that she probably turned the others against me and was the main reason I was murdered. And he just kind of looks at all of you and he's just like, I will finally rest. And he turns the corner into here. I follow. Come into this room. Immediately, uh, what you notice are, um, it's a 15 foot high vaulted uh, ceiling in here. There's a bunch of iron torch sconces all throughout the room. Uh, that have uh, that are all lit. Uh, there, in the middle of the room, there are several kind of really overstuffed, comfy chairs with like too many pillows, but somehow they're still comfy, even though you're kind of like want to maybe move one or two of them off. Um, and there are empty bookshelves and desks all around the walls, uh, lined up against them, uh, against the south wall. So down here, uh, there is a very long banquet table with just what seems to be freshly prepared food. Some of it's still steaming. Uh, there are um, flagons and flagons filled to the brim with wine and ales. Um, and you notice that above the table is a giant painting that takes up almost half of the wall of Halister. And he grins maniacally. As Halith walks in, he kind of takes to the corner. Shadow, as you turn the corner, Midna looks up. Oh, oh, uh, well, I didn't think anyone would, would make it to my little corner here that I've kind of carved out for myself. Do the rest of you kind of enter this room? Or are you kind of waiting for Shadow to give you the signal? I oh, go no. in as I quietly in. as yeah. possible. Okay. All right. So then she sees like there's more and more people piling in. Well, She's why like, wouldn't we be able to make it here? We're a very. We're very hardy. And we didn't murder Good. our teammates. Yeah. Oh, did I? Was I not supposed at, to say that? As you say that, her face kind of runs a little pale, but she's just like, no matter. I'm sure you heard some lies about me and my other fine fellows. No worries. Here's the thing I've had a bad run in this dungeon. My other compatriots have either been captured or killed. And. Let's just say I was a little wounded myself. I've carved out this little area for myself. It's by myself. It's my own core in the dungeon. There's food and drink here that will last me for a very long time. You will leave, turn around, forget I'm here. I'll forget I saw you. No one has to go through anything nasty or unpleasant. I suggest you just turn around and leave. Good lady, as much as I would love to turn around and leave, we have made a friend and we, he wishes to have speaks with you. And Halif kind of emerges from the corner, takes a couple steps forward. Midna, did you not think I would hunt you down to the ends of the earth? She kind of gets up from the chair a little bit and sets back. You see her immediately take her hand and try to cover, and you notice that she's been wearing two necklaces, but she's too slow. And Hal just kind of 
lets out this just rageful yell. Desecrator! You would wear the symbol of Joaquin and mingle it with the vileness of Shaw. It wasn't enough for her to kill me. She felt it necessary to steal my holy symbol and wear it as some sort of trophy. And she kind of is like messing with the necklaces and puts them in underneath her armor. No, no, uh, that, it's not like that, Halith. And she starts backing up against, like backing up. It's not like that. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I tried to stop them. They, they they were filled with rage and hatred, and they 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 wanted to murder you. And he just he takes another step forward. I don't believe you. I know it was you who turned them. And she's like, stop, stop. Everyone just stop right now. If you don't stop advancing towards me, I will have no choice but to unleash the fury of my invisible servants. Ooh, invisible servants. You know she did it. Just take your revenge and we can get to the next one and you will get your rest. As you're saying, and take care of the next one and you will, as you're about to finish that sentence, you just get socked in the mouth. What the f- There's actually invisible- Ah, this is crap. And they roll low. I'm assuming- (laughs) I'm I'm assuming an eight doesn't hit hit, hurt- hit you? Yeah, no, I'm good. So, you would have been socked in the mouth, but instead you just hear this whoosh as it is some invisible entity attempted to punch you in the face. Did something just just try and fart on me? Like I said, I will unleash... There's not... There are way... There are too many invisible beings in here for you all to contend with. (laughs) Leave now, or I must unleash them upon you. I look over at Halith and I say, they're invisible and they fart on you. I think we can handle this. Get your revenge. So he keeps stepping forward. You can give me an arcana check. Clicky, clicky, clicky. Oh, my arcana is not that great. I'll try it anyway. doesn't matter what the I've, spooky woo is. You're not quite sure what this could be. You didn't see her do the necessary, any verbal or somatic or material components necessary for a spell. So you're not sure what this could be. Uh, as Halith advances, let's see if maybe one of these guys can hit him. Yep. 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 Okay, he takes that much damage. And then Shadow, you feel your kind of your rogue spider sense goes off as you three more fists come flying out of invisible air towards you. Does a 15 hit you? No. Does a 19 hit you? Yes. And a natural 20. Yeah. Take three bludgeoning damage total. (laughs) Oh man! <laughs> oh, the pain! They fart so hard it smells. Rask, does a thirteen hit you? Okay. How about an eighteen? Yep. Take one bludgeoning damage. <laughs> it tickles. <laughs> and so <laughs> she can hear. The sounds of some mass hitting you guys, and you can, she can see you guys like oddly, obviously not in pain, but it's kind of more of like a what the hell, as you've been eff- effectively bitch slapped. Um, and she just realizes that her end has come. So uh, Halif is going to, uh, well, he's going to do some bad things to her. Effectively, bitch. Slap, if he doesn't kill ineffectively. her, I, I am going to react. Ineffective. Okay. I, I, uh, I'm, we're gonna Izzy's kind of freaking out. She's like pacing and like not enjoying this at all. Um, I 
takes two of those, huh? Oh, well, first he does that. Which he succeeds. Then he does this. Uh, oh god, plus that. Oh, and he gets extra damage because he's she is his sworn <laughs> enemy. <laughs> Uh, that's a lot of damage. Um, I'm just gonna have Izzy. That's a lot of damage. She has how many hit points? Oh, okay. Uh, well. So once, once again, <laughs> once again, you just see Halif mechanically, robotically walk up to her and just shove his fist. This time. Uh, for uh, um, for the dwarf, he shoved his fist uh, through his head, and bad things happened. This time, he just shoves his fist into her chest, and you see this this moment of her face is already pale from seeing how many people just walked in on her little you know secret base area to just no color at all. Her eyes kind of slowly roll into the back of her head. And then he removes his fist, nothing in it, and she just drops to her knees and falls over as blood starts coming out of her mouth, ears, and eyes. It seems that he uh, might have crushed her heart. And as he looks, he stands over her. <sighs> Joaquin smiles upon me on this day. He bends over, picks up the holy symbol, his holy symbol puts it around his neck and as soon as as soon as it as soon as he attaches the chain to itself and it's laying on his neck or on his chest he turns around looks at all of you thank you the blessings of Joaquin guide your path and he slowly starts to fade from existence don't, don't and then, you have one more? then he's no longer there oh, it would seem had... it would seem that uh, actually uh, you may give me a religion check to kind of figure this out. Anyone else can give me a religion check as well. Can I, I just make a to. guess? Sure. That by killing Mastermind, he actually succeeded in his revenge. 16 and a 21? 16 will do it. You piece together that revenants are made uh, when um, a mortal has been met with a cruel or undeserving fate, uh, especially if they're a cleric, it's more likely to happen. And their god has decided that they will raise them up as this undead spirit that has the ability to know where their you know, betrayers are and gives them a chance to fin basically finish their business. And it appears that Joaquin decided that uh, while he wanted to get revenge on all of his party, that it was this fellow cleric who betrayed him, you know, as an opposite, as a worshiper of an opposite god, and then took his holy symbol. That this was the main entity, and then be killing this, killing this person, and then being reunited with his holy symbol f fulfilled Joaquin's purpose for him, and he has been accepted into the afterlife now. His spirit finally at rest. Praise Joaquin. Delivering vengeance. Yeah, I, uh, I apologize. I'm quite quite new. Is this? Uh, did this man have a uh, what we call a? Uh, 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 did, did he wrong him somehow? What uh, what happened? Vendetta. It, it is. He was angry at him. Okay. Uh, hmm. Yes, we like to call this spooky. It, it happens a lot. Spooky woo. It seems very violent. Is it safe to I mean, come when back one in our, the room? Uh, when, when, when one of our, our people uh, uh, kills another people, they, they just behead them and be done with it. Uh, oh, that's I, I would like to look around the room and see if I can figure out how uh, she made the spooky woo of the non-spell cast invisible hmm. punching servants. Interesting. Give me an investigation check. This man is at peace, yes? Yes. 
Hmm. Very good. 16. Uh, 16. You look around at some of the tables and bookshelves that are mainly empty. Uh, but you're kind of able to piece together that this room was probably once one of the rooms of an apprentice of Hallister's. And you're able to kind of find like a half torn painting. Uh, and you look at it and kind of squint. If you squint really hard at, and then you look at the body on the ground, there's a somewhat of a resemblance there. And you kind of piece it together. It might be possible that these invisible, unseen entities might have confused this woman as their master. I'm, I'm going to just throw a long shot out there as Shadow and just be like, maybe they have terrible eyesight. Yes, I am Pallister's apprentice. Where are my servants? Shadow. Nothing Nothing appears. Maybe, maybe one of you should try since you're, you know, well, uh, I, I uh, pointed Izzy. No. Maybe you, you should try that. Maybe that'll work with, for you. With DM's permission, yes. Nim is going to take a little bit of their water and spritz it like a fine mist all over Shadow's face for doing something <laughs> like that. Bad Shadow. I'm not Ow! a house cat. <laughs> You still react negatively. But yes, I still do react like that. <laughs> but I am also I visibly pissed off after that. I, I tell Izzy to say the words that she is Halister's apprentice and see if it happens. Knock it off. Let her befriend them their own way. Her own way. Yeah, what you happens know, it would have if... been really nice to have friends. You know, I have tons of cookies. Let me let me just look through my bag. And she just kind of starts looking through her backpack and starts tossing like all sorts of different bags of types of cookies. There's like at least a dozen different types of cookies. Anybody you... interested? You can what have them if you cookie? want them. I'll just put them down here for you and you can grab them when you want it. <laughs> what, what, what is this cookie? It's like those meat things that we made earlier. Only oh, that they're is... more full of sweet things versus savory. Though they do have some savory cookies. I think I might have would, one for you. Do you like crickets by any chance? They, they are. The, the, the crickets are, are tasty in and of themselves, God, yes. You kind of wait a little bit, but nothing seems to pick up the cookies and nothing reveals itself to you. May I have that, that one? You said it, you said it was uh, very savory. Had crickets in it? Yes! And she kind of like hands it. It's a little spicy though, but some Ooh, people. Fantastic! Like Thank you. Was there anything valuable in the room? No, like I said, most of the tables and book oh, bookcases yeah. were mainly either looted or destroyed or nothing. And then that, I mean, there is the table full of food. Um, if you're hungry, you can eat. I'll stick with my own rations because I don't trust random food that's been lying around. Fair enough. I have catnip. This cookies. isn't random food. This is cookie. Would you like some? I'm gonna just say let's continue on. Is there any okay. Okay. The okay. north? I made or... it so uh, you're able to travel all the way down to the north. Half, it, way down it, the hallway. It, it dead ends. <laughs> okay. Then I'm gonna check the other hallway, which I guess from here I'd be able to see that it connects to that broken room. Uh, yes, yeah. So that you look to, yeah, you look to your left, and over here is the um, the other part of the collapse room with that in that other tunnel you saw. All right. I I would I would be interested in trying a sweet I cookie. Just keep letting everyone follow me after I, you know, do my hand motions, and I'm I'm starting to not even do the hand motions. I'm starting to put my hands up, and then just come along. That much you guys can figure out, right? Yeah. What do, what does he mean when he makes this gesture? I think he's Damn hot. It, not and he's worth trying 40 to gold. Not worth himself? 40 gold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's fighting himself off. He is cooling himself down. Absolutely. Okay. 
I, I, I understand. I mean, to, to, I usually do this. Are we going north? By taking north a south? nice mud We're bath. going north. <laughs> north down the left. We're going north. north. Okay, north. Yeah. North. Uh, okay. All right. I, I continue. I, I, sneak, I sneak up to this. So we'll, we'll do that when we come back. Okay. Uh, do you need to eat taller? There's going to be some issues, just so you know, if you become human. Don't worry. Huh. How do you Looks spell like back. Alrighty. Thank you for staying with this uh, family out there that is watching. We appreciate it. We had a little technical difficulties, but we are back. You did not miss anything. All that has happened is Shadow has walked up to the door. He has done a perception check to see if it was trapped or locked. And with his 16, I told him it's all good in the hood. And as he's about to turn around and relay the information to the rest of his party, he reaches out with his hand. And Shadow, you notice that your arm is no longer covered in your signature black as night fur. It is more of a uh, less fur covered. It's actually, it's just skin. You, it's, there's just skin now. And you look at the rest, you look at your other arm, skin, no fur. Touch your face, no fur. Your ears are gone. No, wait, no, they just changed where they are. Nose, different, no whiskers. You are a human now. Hey. Tap it to your face! I try and He's climb and see imposter. if I can still climb. No! Like, no. Who are you? Can, can I turn it off? Who? Is he smacks uh, him? I don't know. Would you? It's my magic item. Am I able to just turn it off while still wearing it? I've attuned to you're it. You're like, you've attuned to it? You can't turn it off. It would seem it, it would seem that you need to unattune to it. Pull it off entire or take it off. Does it still? You take it off, and very very slowly, the fur starts to creep back up on your arms, and your and your hands start to morph back into paws. Your fingernails grow out, slowly turning into claws. And I put it back on real quick just to see if it's now like a on and off thing whenever I wear it. It, then it go, you go back to being a human. I right, take it off, stick it in my bag. Okay. It's going to stay there Don't for a while. Never do that again. You should right. not be ashamed of who you are. Very slowly, Shadow turns back into uh, Shadow. It is incredibly useful, though, if you don't want anybody to know who you are. I, I am entirely not ashamed by it. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh,. Why do but I feel us, like I just saw you Let us know the next naked. time you do that. I'm back to this, back to the door. A little bit. We're, I'm not going to care about that at all. We're not going to talk about that. That never happened. Back to the door. Back to the door. With my 16. Is it trapped or locked at all that I can tell? Nope. All good in the hood. Seems uh, like okay. it's unlocked. I open the door slowly, quietly. Okay. You open the door. Uh... It's the room. This room has about a 30 foot high ceiling. Oh, let me uh, get rid of the. Uh, the uh, let, me, let me get rid of the door so you can see in here. Can see. Let there be light. Uh, yeah, so this room uh, has about a 30 foot high ceiling. Uh, and you can see a door to the south over here, and then two doors to the west over here and a door to the north. Uh, we'd have to step in to see it, but there is a door to the north. Uh, <clears throat> the walls are all co covered in uh, frescoes uh, depicting cities uh, made of black stone uh, succumbing to the ocean and being sunk and uh, the wrath of the ocean deities taking back the land that dare encroach upon it. 
Um, other than that, this room seems to be pretty clean, actually. Sensing a theme with this, though. Slim is <laughs> not, fascinated. Not, not a lot of dust or debris here. Um, I am going to, to go up to the north and check out this door <laughs> up here. Oh, um, good. Slow, slowly, though, I'm going to wait for the rest of the party to get in, just because I'm paranoid. Yeah, so when you get, like, there, you have this weird, once again, spidey sense is going off. But this time, it's a little too late, as... Well... <laughs> It, you now notice that this room is too clean. Oh, no. Too little debris. Oh, God. Too little dust. Shit. Rask knew something was off. You notice also this cube that has engulfed you. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, is too large. This cube is the size of four cubes. And you realize you're going to lose some fur on this one. That's a big cube. That is a huge cube. That is technically a gargantuan cube. Somewhere in his noodle shop, Sprouting Hops just had shivers go down his spine. Yes, yes. I had to tell Tyler I'm sorry for stealing his cube. Uh, Shadow, you might give me a dexterity saving throw. It will be a disadvantage, though. <clears throat> a 19. 19. FN robes, man. Yep. So you, you literally, like, you bump into this thing face first. But it seems it was, if ooze is sleep, it was asleep. And your snout, you know, sizzles a little bit. And ow, that kind of hurts. But you don't get completely engulfed by this thing. It, it's the fur. The fur touched it first. Spidey rogue senses. <laughs> sure, that's what we'll kitty, go with. Kitty, kitty rogue senses. <laughs> it will, however, lash out with you, out at you with uh, two of its pseudopod attacks. Uh, a 23 will hit. Yeah. And does a 16 hit? No. Okay, so it'll do... 12 acid damage. I'm going to take half with my reaction. Perfect. And then you will all roll initiative as the cube has finally awoken from its long, long slumber of being trapped in this room as there's no way it could fit through any of these doors. It has just been waiting for some unlucky adventurer to come in here. Oh my. Damn, John had initiative. And the rogue going super slow. <laughs> That's actually comical. Okay. Well, I mean, you are stuck in a cube, so. Jelly. I'm not jelly. <laughs> <laughs> no, he is jelly. He's in a gelatinous cube. I know. Who's being? Sharask, <laughs> you're first. I Sharask is going to move. Uh, five, ten. Here. All I hear is a slight. You hear a slight burning sound. You you smell like the smell of hair being burned, and Shadow is going, guys. Shadow, are are you okay? Smells as like you as you come rushing in. Here. Yes, as you come rushing in, you see Shadow's kind of staring at what you think is just a blank, like an empty space in front of him, like towards the door. But then you see that this thing actually, as it starts to slide, slowly move and jiggle a little bit, that this is the largest cube you have ever seen in your life. Right, you, you you also, <laughs> Sorry. You also notice that in the middle of the cube, in the center, 
is a dwarven skull sheathed in glass. <laughs> Weird why dwarven skull in there in glass. Hmm. All right, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to use my bonus action uh, to cast Hunter's Mark. Okay, like it. Thing. And then since this is the first round of combat, I will take three shots at it. Alrighty. I'll give it this symbol so that we know it's Hunter's Marked. Uh, 17 will hit. Uh, so 17, 23, 17. Uh, 17, 23, 17. Yep, all three of the same. Uh, do I do Hunter's Mark on all three of those? Yes, the Hunter's Mark damage is applied to all of them. Uh, one, four, and four. Uh, okay, so total that is 21, 39. Okay. So you see Shiraz load one. It looks like, and now that you see, it looks like one of a, a custom made uh, clip of crossbow bolts that he loads into his hand crossbow, and, or his heavy crossbow, and fires away. And all three, they sink into the, the jelly-like ooze, and they kind of just, <clears throat> and they just, you see it streak into the cube and stop. Seems, seems like it did something. Uh, I cannot tell if hurt it or just made it wobble. Uh, that is your turn, though. So, Densic. Aha. So, I guess I'll move in to right there. See that Shadow is in peril. And say, worry not, cat friend. When I tell the tale of this moment, I will leave out the fact that you might have failed without my help and give you inspiration. Uh, and then with my... <laughs> then with it my is some of the action. shoddiest inspiration, but inspiration nonetheless. <laughs> Keep inspiration <It> inspires. <laughs> uh, that was my bonus action so then with my actual action I will cast firebolt all right firebolt firebolt uh 17 yep that hits for 15 fire damage holy crap I rolled pretty good nice. on that damage yeah you did uh okay that is your full turn. Uh, Shadow. Nope. I'm going to use the rest, of, the rest of my movement to go back. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I am going to poke it with my rapier, which is my packed weapon. Or no, sorry. I'm thinking. I just screwed that my brain up. I'm going it's to poke okay. it with my rapier. Poke, poke, poke away. Uh, let's poke it once, and then I'm going to run away. Does a, I, at a, f no, uh, that that should not be a five, no matter what, because my bonus is seven. One twenty plus one CS. It, it, it should be a uh, thirteen. I don't know why. Uh, looks like it rolled a one. Yeah, but wait. It looks like it, on mine, it looks like it rolled a four. It gave me a plus think, one without anything I, else. I think the four is from the decks. I don't think it cal I don't think it added your proficiency modifier for some reason. Um, let me try rolling it again just to see if it does it. If it was just a one off. Sure. Yeah, you roll. You rolled a four, but then it's only adding one. That. That's right. Okay. So, so you would have gotten an 11. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, eleven does hit. Okay. Uh, do I still get? Well, I still get my sneak, correct? Because uh, I get sneak against anything that's not within five feet. Ah, uh, yes, you would. Okay. Because you're a swashbuckler. Yes. So that's uh, twenty-four total. Uh, twenty-four total damage. All yes. right. And then I'm just going to uh, uh, back up. Let's see. Uh, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40. I'm going to go. Actually, I'm going to go out the door instead. Since it can't fit anyway. I'm going to go to uh, here. Still can keep an eye on it, but uh, it won't be able to try and catch me again. <laughs> Or, oh goodness, uh, I didn't even use the inspiration yet. Alrighty. Yeah. Izzy. Izzy is very upset that her friend has been injured. So she's going to do a stupid thing for friendship and go into the room. Okay. But Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Holy shiznit, that is a big cube. Hmm? Oh. It's a I'm, big old boy. I'm magic missile it. Okay. Roll magic missile, which automatically hits. Do it three times. One, two, and three. So that's six, twelve, seventeen total. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The thuds of the magic missile in the gelatinous cube seems to reverberate with them. It's uh, not looking so hot. Uh, anything else, Izzy? Uh... Let me double check. Let's see now. No. Can I do that? I can't do that. I am good. All right, Nim. Hmm. If I do something to the cube, would it hurt Shadow? No, Shadow is not in the cube. He oh, ran okay. away. Oh, good job, Shadow. Brave Sir Shadow runs away. <laughs> okay, I am going to move into the room. Just enough to be... Holy shit. Um... <laughs> Big cube, right? <laughs> I heard Izzy say it, and I went and, 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 and pictured it. Like, I gotta see this for myself. Oh my god, Izzy was not kidding. <laughs> Like your friend's like, hey, come here, look at this thing. It's so weird. And you're like, that nah, is not weird. What the fuck? <laughs> um, Moonbeam. Okay. Because it's one of my favorites. Or. Or he says. Uh, it requires a constitution saving throw. All right. It will make. It will, it will make one. That's cocked. A 20. What? No. He's, this thing is yeah. quite constitutous. Constitutous. That's um, totally a word. Okay. Does that, player question, does, does that eliminate my spell from my list since I can only cast two three-level spells? Or, I'm sorry, three two-level spells? 
Uh, no, so you, you could cast that again. You just use one of your spell slots. Okay. So like technically all, of, like in a day, all the second level spells you cast could be Moonbeam if you wanted them to be. Okay. Yeah. Um, but remember, you did have full spell slots from the Blessing yes. of Seychelles. So you've, you're, only, you're only down one spell slot right now. <clears throat> okay. Excuse me. Well then, uh, for now I will... Minus the healing. No, the, that blessing took place after the healing. I will scoot back into the doorway where it cannot touch me for now. Good idea. All right, it's the cube's turn. Cube's not happy. Five, 10, 15. Oh, hello. <clears throat> it will make... Uh, it's not going to split its attention. It's going to try to take one of you down and consume you. It will make four attacks against Shirask. Ugh. You will do well to pay does attention eight, to Shirask. Does an eight or a nine hit you? No. There or we go. Does a, does a 13 hit you? A natural 20 hits you. I assume, based on the rules of this game, yes. 26 acid damage. Two. As just this large tentacles shaped formation comes out of the cube and slams down on you, just burning through part of your gear and sizzling your flesh. This does not feel good. <laughs> Why? Uh, okay. That's its turn. Sharask, it's your turn. This thing is right in front of you. Why are you doing this? It's not okay. First you burn her cat. Now you burn me. Not a very wise decision. Uh, I'm going to take two shots at it. Just so you know, if you stay right here, your shots will be at disadvantage since you are in close range. Uh, I have fighting style archery. Nope, that's not it. I have a thing for that. Oh, does, crossbow uh, does crossbow expert knock that out? Yes, I believe so. Hostile expert. Yep, hostile creature. Being within five feet of a hostile creature does not Doesn't. impose All right, disadvantage. Perfect. All right, shoot away, sir. And so I will take two shots. Uh, uh, a fourteen does hit. That can't hit though. An eleven does hit. Wow, really? It's our gargantuan gelatinous cube. <laughs> Even if you child, a child, a child can get this. Yeah, even if you close your eyes and shut, you probably spin around with my weapon pointed out. I hit it. Yes. Uh, Two hundred smart. Eighteen twenty-eight. Okay, and that is enough. Oh wow! Your, the two bolts from your crossbow uh, launch forth, buried deep into the cube. Once again, you're not sure if, any, if it has any effect on it, if anything's, if it's doing anything, and then you see it massive. The whole thing starts to shudder, vibrations being sent to the middle where the skull is. The glass encasing around the skull shatters, breaks, and the gelatinous cube loses its form. And as it falls, as the entire thing just collapses in on itself, it turns to water, and wa and just fills the chamber for a brief moment before it slowly starts to drain out. Left on the ground is the Dwarven Skull. Sh Shrask for a very brief moment does does that, you know, that tap, tiptoe dance you do when you know the water is too hot. <laughs> okay, and, sure. And then he realizes, oh, 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 okay. Nobody saw that, right? Yeah. Absolutely Damn no it. one saw you making that motion. I was standing next to you. <laughs> well, good thing we're friends, right? 
No, second no. best friend. There's second best still friend. you need healing. I go and oh, still. hope. Yes, I very hurt. You see the scale? I pull. I. Oh, I'm sorry. I like it. You poke the skull. No. I, I grab, heal you first. <laughs> I, I lift up a scale. I very, I very, very hurt. You see, I, uh, uh, my my uh, innards are showing beneath this. It is just a uh, yes. I I can see my muscle under here. Could I? Could you help me? Uh, uh, uh oh, this is the biggest wound I've ever seen. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Here, I wrap it up. Uh, no, no, here. Just uh, so you poke, you poke, you poke the skull. Nothing happens. Uh, you are able to kind of tell that it is a dwarven skull, but uh, you kind of look at it and you're like, hmm, I've killed enough people to know that that's actually a Durgar skull. Hmm. Um, I poke it a couple more times until I finally pick it up, look at it, and I look over at Izzy and say, hey, here's a new friend. I have healed our lizard friend for eight. Eight. I mean, yeah. Eight. But Thank like, you very much. He's dead, so he can't consent to friendship, and you know. But he's dead. That means he's lonely and needs a friend. <gasps> oh no! Don't be lonely. She just what? takes the skull and kind of hugs it. I'll be your friend forever. What? What friend? What what level of friend is the now uh, skull you have in your head? One, two, three, four. Fifth best friend. Fifth best friend. Okay, so, and I am second. Yes, Nim is okay. third. Nim is third. Cal is fourth. Skull is fifth. Not not and that I. Oh oh, sorry. Densic is six. Densic walks away from this nonsense. <laughs> Damn. You forgot about a, another kitty. Oh, Shadow is always first. No, Densic. another kitty. Densic what? just moved down to eighth best friend. You notice all the doors in this in this uh, in this area. Uh, all have uh, decorations and symbols of water in various languages, um, and there, you know, it's water is depicted as a wave, water depicted as uh, a lake or a river, um, water t- depicted as rain. Is it's all it's carved into all these doors. Shadow kind of raises his hair as he's walking through. He doesn't like how much water there is here. Oh, this is beautiful. I could go for a real bath right now. Nice, warm water. That'd be fantastic. There's the door to the north, two to the west, and one to the south. Are any of these doors open, or are they all closed? All closed. Okay. Again, I'm going to check to the north. Now that there's no longer a thing there, check it for locks and traps. Okay. Give me a perception check. Nib? Nim would like to examine all the beautiful artwork of the ocean reclaiming the land. Uh, so a lot of it is beautiful. There are some kind of uh, sketchy stuff where it shows, you know, clearly horrified and scared faces of people as the ocean is swallowing their their homes and their lives. But a lot of it's very nice. Just kind of gloss over that part, like oh, hmm. nature is. Uh... Let's just pretend that they were also yeah. half sea elf. Oh no, 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 no! You know th- those are the evil people that the sea was reclaiming. Yes, and this is all part of, the, of of our condition as well. We have to take the good with the bad. The, the nature gives life, and nature takes it away. It is something that I have seen many times. Uh, Fifteen uh, door is definitely yes. locked. All right, and you actually look at you look at the edges of the door. It seems like this door is like airtight shut. I'm gonna check you, the other doors first. Now you go over to the west doors. Same uh, thing. I, I, air, okay. air, airtight, airtight, shut, locked. South door, airtight, airtight, shut, locked. It seems like your door 
was the only one that wasn't locked and you you go to and you close it just to test and it just gives this as it air, as it airtight seals itself i don't like this place i don't like this place at all oh yeah. yeah i'll be I honest know. i don't enjoy being in sealed rooms yeah I, i'm gonna leave this door open and i'm I'm voting we just ignore this section because it looks wet. I, I know it looks dry right now, but it looks wet because there's so many things over here of water reclaiming land and airtight doors. Shadow does not like it. Shadow but, doesn't but care. There's, there's nothing to be afraid of with the water. <sighs> I lived uh, underwater for half of my life. I can only breathe, hold my breath for so long. Oh, yes, I forget you all need oxygen. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I don't, I don't, I, I'm... Shadow just looks at the remnants of the water from the cube. Maybe it was to keep the you, cube you guys in here? Have, you, you guys can have fun if you, maybe, but uh, I'm seeing too much of a trend <laughs> and... I'm not liking water. I pull my picks out and I hand them to, uh, no, not Izzy. Who would I hand them to? I'll hand them to Densic and say, you, sir, if you want to try, you can give it a shot or let somebody else try. I'll wait outside. Try what? To unlock the doors. <laughs> Oh, I have an idea. You know, since you guys can't breathe water, go wait outside and and I'll see if I can do something with it. I can breathe water. I'll be fine. Are you sure you want or to be in here to, alone? Or we can just avoid this area. Shadow. I say, I say from the hallway. The water has just as much to explore as the land does. Just because you can't breathe under it doesn't mean that's valid. I it don't care about the not, not breathing bad. part. I I trust you, Nim. I think you could do it. I'll just encourage you from the hallway, because I need to breathe. Shrask is very curious. But there is a limit to Shrask's, Shrask's breath. Mm. Well, if everyone's for it, I'll have Nim attempt to get those doors open. That being said, you are a friend, yes? Nim yes. is friends. Yes. Okay. I, I, I want to give my friend a, 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 a tiny bit of advice. What happens if the door shuts and there's other things in here with you? Um, I guess I'll die. Oh, or we yeah, can avoid the area entirely because it's wet. But but could water. be wet. Wet enough that I don't care. I, I think Nim is just really missing the water. She's kind of feeling seasick right now. You make terrible, terrible jokes. What is seasick? Nim, would I you like heard... to open the door? Or attempt to open the door, I suppose. As long as everyone is safe out in the hall, yes. Okay, are you shutting the door behind you? That depends on if they'll be safe or not. <laughs> I'm going no, to- No, no, you have no idea what's behind these doors. I'm going to intentionally leave the door pried open so okay. that hopefully if there, there is going to be a deluge as uh, is said, uh, as Don Ernetto said, that we will uh, not be flooding the room. Quite, uh, I have a uh, question. Did you, uh, you, you went to the door, yes? That was the plan. Okay, yes. Uh, all right. I, I apologize. I was uh, uh, mis misunderstood for a second there. Okay, yes. I fully support you in your endeavor, Shadow. First best friend. Okay. Let's so do you prop, this. so you prop open the door. Yeah. Uh, you prop open this door. Yes. And which door are you going to, then? 
Let me take a look at the map. Got this door to the west, this door to the west, door to the south, and door to the north. Hmm. Let's do... Well, we already know where the door to the south goes. Do we know? Yeah, that's true. I should be able to tell you that. that I think it's the door to the broken hallway room. Oh. Okay, well, um, how's the bottom left? Up here? Yes. Sorry, I was trying to make the clicky thing with the circle and it wouldn't let me. So, you... Uh, Shadow has given you his his lock picking set and you look at it and there's a long flat skinny kind of uh, needle looking thing and then a dagger and then a a bunch of sets of different uh, bumpy tools and then you also have like a small kind of hook tool and you're like what the hell do I use these for? (laughs) You look at the door. He told you it was locked, and you kind of like check it. Yeah, it's locked. Okay. Give me a sleight of hand check. Oh, no. Let me break all his tools. Watch you get a net 20. Fumble through it. That would be hilarious. Be perfect, really. 22. That's pretty damn high. (laughs) So you look at all, you look at the server. It's it came, it came in like a little like a pouch too. So you're just kind of like, uh, this one looks good. This one looks <laughs> good too. And you kind of just like jam them both into the keyhole, and you're just like, okay, I've seen him do this before. And you're just like, and then you just kind of like do this weird like V motion. It definitely bends a little bit further than it should, but then you do hear the <laughs> click as the door unlocks. You, t- you pull both tools out. This one. one one looks a little bit different than you remember sticking it in looking. But you're like, eh, it's fine. And you put, them both, you put t- <laughs> both tools back in the pouch. I gave them knowing they weren't probably going to come back the way that I gave them. Well, I mean, they're, they're, nothing's been broken yet. They're still workable pieces. Exactly. All right, so you have unlocked the door. You may open it if you so choose. I do so choose. All right, you so choose. You chose poorly. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> open it up. <laughs> it's a slight heart attack. You open it up, and in this room, uh, in the middle, there's a 20-foot high limestone altar. Kind of like right here-ish. Uh, and on top of the altar seems to be what looks like if someone had taken molten gold and then just poured it onto the altar and then left it to harden. Oh, that sounds cool. So it's just kind of like this weird like puddle of gold if that was a term um into the wall are all these kind of where you you just came from a room that showed you know the sea reclaiming the earth and lots of ocean uh imagery this is more horrible uh into the wall are lidless eyes and gaping mouths carved in black mildew seems to drip from all of it. Um, It's horrifying, really. But other than that, there doesn't really seem to be anything else in this room. I'm going to walk in there. Or I'm going to walk in, walk right here. Yeah, so the rest, so the rest of you, yeah, so the rest of you kind of have an angle at that door. You kind of do that weighted beta breath thing as Nim opens the door. They walk in, pause, no screams. Everything seems okay. Safe, but it's ugly. What? What yeah, is and, ugly? I'll come up here. I don't know, but I want to go unlock the other door now. Oh, sure, that yeah, seems. Sure, as you walk in, you, you see the same thing as well. Just these horrible <sighs> eyes that seem all seen 
and don't have any eyelids or fe- any other features that you can tell their eyes and these awful mouths that seem to stretch too long and just have jagged lines for lips and then all leaks this horrid black mildewy mold. Can I, uh, is this any like imagery tied to something? I am relatively curious about this now. Give me a religion check. And you too also see the limestone altar covered in what appears to be molten gold. That has 20. Hardened. 20. Uh, you take a look and you realize that these are not the carvings of a religion per se. Uh, the gaping mouth, the lidless eyes, meaning all seeing, all consuming. This seems to be consistent with symbols to the demon lord Jubilex. Ooh. And you know that the demon lord Jubilex is the lord creator, progenitor of all slimes and oozes. If oozes were sentient, they would all owe their creation and would worship Jubilex. Mm. Uh, so I have found father of cube shrine thing over here. And that's all he says. Nim calls from the other room. I found it first. Oh no no no! Yes yes, you did. I I will amend my uh, amend my uh, what what, and I and I shout back. What level of friend is 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 this one? Third. As you close Third the door, friend has found it first. As you close the door on that altar, it once again airtight seals, maybe making this like just this kind of sucking sound. I do not recommend going in there. Uh, Nim, you're going to attempt to unlock this door as well? You betcha. I like it. Uh, give me another side of hand check. Oh, I'm go- before I do that, I'm going to wait for mm-hmm. them all to file back out just for safety. Ah, Shiraz, would you like to leave the, the this room as well and go back in the hallway? Or are you kind of just like, eh, I trust him at this point? You have done very well. Continue. Not me. You should trust. If it floods, you're going to die. I'll do my best, though. I can I can cast Lesser reg- Restoration on you and maybe, just maybe. I, I trust Third Friend. Uh, it's, it's not me. If something goes wrong, it's not me. It's the possible traps. Okay? Yes, but Third Friend third friend saves Rask. I will do my best. You do not sound very confident. 17. Wow. These rolls. <laughs> Once again, you, so you open the pouch back up. You're like, ah, okay. So if I know anything about doors, there's no way the last <laughs> two tools are the same two tools I need this time. So you pick out the dagger and you pick out one of the other bumpy tools. You're like, you stick the bumpy tool in and you're like, you take the butt of the dagger, boom, boom, boom. You just kind of like hammer it into the lock. And you hear this crunching, <laughs> cracking, breaking sound. <laughs> You're like, ooh. Uh. This hurts and then you hear me the, physically. And then you, uh, the last little bump you give into it, the full bit of the uh, second tool you use is now completely in the lock, but you hear the tumbler fall. And you're like, oh, that did it. So that's and how he uses these. He must you have put the, to you, replace them a lot. Yeah, you get the feeling that, you know, Every time he goes to, you know, a place where he can get goods and things like that, he must have to refill his thieves tools. There's a reason why there's so many of them. Yeah, right. That, that, that's exactly. And you start thinking like, wow, that's why there's so many of these things. It's because <laughs> they're like a one time use. Um, you think that maybe a good uh, Yule time present for Shadow might be more of these. Things. <laughs> you put the dagger back in the pouch, zip it up. Uh, the door, you are able to open the door now if you so choose. <laughs> Did we All right, just still video game like... logic on this? What's that? I feel like we just use, like, video game knowledge. Like, I feel like I'm I'm playing Fallout, and I'm trying to, like, lockpick stuff, and it fails, and I just keep using more until it eventually pops open. Like... Nim, Nim didn't fail. They got it on the first try. No, I know. I'm just saying, like, with how busted these tools are looking, is this just how we're just doing it now? 
That's how Nim does it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's just a Nim thing. It's Nim the rogue. It's absolutely beautiful. You didn't tell us you're switching to a rogue, Nim. <laughs> 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 over here. You said, I dru- you said <laughs> druid. I did not know either. Apparently, yeah. druids actually have a decent sleight of hand. I don't know. Is she it's is no. she proficient now? Is, uh, are, they, are, are they proficient now? No. <laughs> I I know. <laughs> no, it's just a modifier. To... For... Dumb luck. See, see, here's the thing though. Now that you've done this, until Shadow actually looks at his picks and realizes what you've done, he's going to take a moment, and every time he starts to do his thieves can't, he's going to look right at you. <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe Nim's oh. a double agent. Maybe, no, no. maybe. <laughs> all right, all right. So you 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 have unlocked the door successfully. Would you like no, to turn the, the knob door. and open it? Yes, please. Excellent. As oh, you God. open the door, please give me a strength saving throw. Tra- yeah. Trax, please give me a strength saving throw as well. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Six, not great. That's what we, that's what we like to see. Oh, right there. mine's gonna be even worse. Roll, darn it. Uh, twelve, not great either. <laughs> so you open the first door and you're like, oh, some weird altar that looked really creepy. And then the creepy lizard guy was like, oh yes, that is an altar to a demon lord of oozes. And you're like, oh yeah, let's close that door right back up. That's yeah, no. And you're like, okay, all right, door number two. And literally, as soon as you open it and you break the airtight seal on the door, the the door is ripped from your grasp and is flung open as far as it can. And this just, you you can cast Tidal Wave. You know what that spell looks like. This is like three Tidal Waves worth of water just comes rushing out. Uh, the technical amount is 24,000 cubic feet of water just rushes from the room that you open from and just completely fills this room. The two of you are knocked prone and will take uh, who's their saving throw first? Tra- uh, Shrask, you'll take 17 bludgeoning damage. And Nim, you'll take 14 bludgeoning damage. Big oof. And you're both thrown prone, and then the water just keeps rushing over you. Nim, you're fine. You can you can breathe through water, but stress. It's just this deluge, as uh, as Don Arnetto and Chat put, just keep washing over you and over you. <laughs> you're, you almost drown until finally it kind of subsides. And this room is the whole this whole entire room that you're in right here is covered in an inch of water. <laughs> Wait, do I almost right. drown? No, you're fine. You okay. can breathe water. You're fine. This is like kind of like a shower for you almost. Well, that was so refreshing. Right? I, yeah, I you get up, you. you're like, ah, okay. I, I told you it would be fine. How you, how you uh, doing, Shrass? Isn't an, that refreshing? On an unrelated note. I mean, it hurts, but... Can we take a rest? <laughs> oh. Uh, you were able to look into this room now. This room is still also is... There's an inch of water in this room as well. Uh, but you see, this room is clearly what used to be a laboratory. Um, and you also, uh, Nim, you're very able, quickly to be able to tell that this was salt water that rushed out. It was not fresh water. Uh, yeah. Collect some. You, uh, per, you, very easily, you scoop down with a, a, like an old empty potion vial, bottle it, and you have a, uh, a potion vial's worth of salt water. Uh, CS, so yeah, so you look in here. Uh, it's just kind of, kind of, kind of a laboratory. Um, there's some ruined, like, in this, it's all ruined because it's completely waterlogged. Um, but there's tables, there's some books that are complete, like, you can barely tell they're books. Um, and you kind of, you know, splash around the room a little bit, and you are able to pick up a glass wand. Uh, Shrask, in the room, as you get up, uh, you kind of put your hand down into the inch of water and it sinks in, it sinks into something disgusting. And as you stand up, you kind of are able to pull up, um, 
what is uh, this rotting corpse that's mm. it's it's wearing green and purple robes. Uh, it looks vaguely human. Uh, the skin is just disgusting and bloated from being you know stuck in water for a, who knows how long. I've seen. Um, yeah, you've you've seen this death before in the swamps where people get lost or something, take a wrong turn, and they end up face down in a swamp, and then their body gets bloated. Um, so it's not the most horrifying thing to you specifically, but it is pretty disgusting. Um, this, but based on the robes and the style of them and the colors, this appears to be another one of Halster's apprentices that was experimenting. It seems, and it went horribly, horribly wrong. Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to take a uh, gigantic leap over the pond here and uh, say that this man might have something to do with that door and the water. <laughs> we should really uh, how do you how, how do you lay your people to rest here? Uh, Maybe we throw. Maybe we put him into the door. There are many undead here, it seems. So maybe we lock him behind the other door. I'm not sure. What? 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 What do you want to do with with this wizard? Uh, call it person. Well, if we decide to stay in this room, we should probably put him respectfully in another room, or at least outside of this room with his belongings. Okay, so you want me you want to put him outside of this room with his belongings. All right. All carefully right. and respectfully. Carefully and respectfully. Okay, where are his belongings? Wherever. Just what he has on him? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. So he grabs it as respectfully as a lizard folk does to a body that's been drifting in water, which is to say he like just picks it up in two hands kind of like gets over to the sou- southern door over here throws it over his shoulder as much as the skeleton's intact you'll be like oh <laughs> the hips fell off <laughs> crap okay all right i'm gonna open the door put put half of his body in the corner grab the hips put the hips with the body okay <laughs> Uh, he has he he has respectfully put it a quarter. Interesting. Is is this not right? Oh no 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 no! It's you did you did very well. I'm very proud of you. And Nim like pets the lizard on the head. Oh, thank you very much. Third friend is very generous. Then I shut the door. All right. <laughs> and once again, the uh, the door airtight seals. Alrighty. We've got a door to the south that you guys are pretty confident you know where it goes, and a door to the north. I, I am... Since we just got hurt, uh, I vote we check the two doors and then lock them and take a rest if we need it. How many spell slots have you um, I only used up like two, okay. but John's character needs more healing, and my character needs healing, and pretty sure someone I have else healing. Needs healing. Also, uh, I have like, the healings. Yeah, out of character for a second. If we take a short rest, I can use hit dice. Yes, all, all of us. Need uh, yeah, I. Uh, with John, like actually John, John, as possible. Shrask, you know that with that, which essentially with the altar and the carving, essentially equates to a small temple to Jubilex the south. Uh, you're not quite sure if you know a long rest would be safe or good, depending on how much of the Demon Lord's influence permeates into this plane at this low at this area. A short rest would probably be safe. Um, but they're longer. Uh, if you're, not, stay too you're not. Long, you're not. So. Yeah, you're not sure what horrors might creep into your minds if you stay here for too long. Maybe we go to other. Room. Well, yes, we can I'm... still use a short rest so you guys can roll some hit dice. Not fond of did, an did ogre the, uh, touching my body. 
Did, did the major, did the invisible people in the other room attack us afterwards? No. Maybe we go there. Because altar seems very bad. Okay. This also, is an altar to a demon. Also, we get to stay away from this room, which Shadow really doesn't care for anyway, so. Yes, the, I, I understand the, the water is not a good thing for you. I understand this. I wonder if my invisible friends ate the cookies I left behind. You guys go back to the... Yeah, uh, mid this room. Okay. Is that all of you? One, two, three, four. Who am I missing? Oh, Nim's up here in the corner. There we go. All right, yeah. So you guys are able to make it back into this room. I mean, there's a dead body on the floor now, but... Yeah. You can take a short rest and roll some hit dice, though. Yep, no problem. Uh... Yes, yeah, so take a short rest. Any abilities you gain back on a short rest, you gain back. Uh, let's see, Bard, I believe you get your inspirations back on a short rest. Um, that is correct. Fighter, you get just back just about everything but spell slots back on a short rest. Uh, Druid, I don't think you get anything but you can use hit dice on a short rest. Rogue, hit dice on a short rest. Ranger, just hit dice. dice. Can I... Um, this is just... A D10 plus con, right? For each one? Yes. Yes, correct. And make sure you keep track of how many you use because you don't get hit dice back until you take a long rest. Roger that. Come on. Uh, Densic, you'd, you'd want to roll a D8. Bards have a uh, D8. No, I'm, I'm, I'm rolling my song rest. Oh, okay. What? So every, everybody gains an additional one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey, that's better than nothing. That's if you sure. use it, exactly. you, get, you get one additional per hit die. There we go. Oh, nice. So I rolled three, forty, one. Uh, okay. I rolled two more. What do I roll exactly? As a, uh, uh, hit die. Uh, druids have d8s for hit dice, yeah. okay. so you t- determine how many d8s you want to use up to your level, which you guys are level six, um, and then you add your con modifier and then an extra one because of dead sick. Yeah, you can just click the hit dice button. Oh, oh, oh. did not know that. If you start automatically add it and then add the one. While everyone is like trying to heal themselves and, and, and take a break, is there any way I could try to convince the invisible people if they're still in the room to come out and play? Okay, persuasion check. You do notice that none you do notice that none of your cookies were taken. They're in the exact same spot. Actually oh. no, but not because you kinda of put them on the ground. They've been moved to the table, but that's it. I got a sixteen. Sixteen? You just kinda of like walk around, you're like Hey, like, maybe I want to be my friend. You don't want to play. Hello, anybody there? Nothing reveals itself to you or makes a sound or seems to acknowledge. It's okay. I understand you're shy. I'll wait. <laughs> they don't want to be my friend. Is he just kind of starts sniffling and is trying not to cry? Debating on if I want to use and four points from my hit point max. If I want to bother using another hit dice or just leave it be for now? So uh, 40, on a lo- 54 on a, out of 48. On a long rest, you get up to half your hit dice back. So you'd get uh, at six level, you get three hit dice back on a long rest. Okay. Are we doing a short or long? You guys taking a short, but just so you know, like if you were to use more than three hit dice, hit point, hit yeah, hit point dice, you would not get them all back the next time you long rest. You would only get three of them back. Okay. So then, like, like for the next day, then you kind of short some hit dice. So, you know, play that however you want, or however you think is best. I have six total, and if I get three back, I can use three now. Yeah. I'm fine so, with so that. If you want to use okay. All right. 
Looks like you're back up to full. More than enough. <laughs> Alrighty. I've never actually, in all the games I've played, I've never done this process before. And I've played yeah. for how many years now? Yeah, short rests are baller. Especially when you're kind of like in uh, deep and enemy territory and might not be safe to take a long rest. Short rests are pretty baller. Uh, all right. So, where are you guys heading from here? All right. <coughs> now, didn't our goblin friend say that the exit was south? Yes, they did. Then, how about we go back and go to the south? Since... Like, you want to go all the way back to the, uh, the crossroad? Yeah, because, I mean, up north we know uh, we might be headed back into uh, my territory. Yeah. Yeah, you can safely assume that not too far from that area you were just exploring would be a watch post of some sort for yeah, Xanathar. Let's let's go south. Okay, so I will take you guys back to that crossroad. To the crossroad. You need to start blasting some bone thugs in harmony. <laughs> Boom, 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 boom. I do every day. What you gonna do? Well, there ain't nowhere to hide. Judgment comes for you. Okay. Uh, yes. So here you are. Back to the crossroads. Uh, south is here, obviously. You know your cardinal directions. Uh, just so you know, like a little bit to the west, back over here is where the goblin market is. Mm -hmm. So you kind of, so that way you can kind of picture where you guys are in this dungeon in your head. All right, so now that we're back to this area, I'm going to do that once again where I'm just going to start strolling to the south. Sneak and you're strolling. Just give me a general stealth and perception. Back. All right. As you're strolling, strolling, strolling. Uh, 22 on perception and 14 on stealth because I am just... Because you're just the sneakiest rogue ever. Yeah, you're you're pretty confident. Everything we come across in this dungeon, so this level dungeon, pushovers, easy. Uh, so yeah, so you're strolling. You come here, and it's just more long hallway until you get about here, and you notice there's a tunnel that leads up to the north. All right. So you can either continue east or lead up to the um, north a little bit. Let's see. What do I? See? Okay, so it goes up a little bit, and then it curves. So, same thing as before. I'm gonna take a look. I'm gonna sneak a peek, and well, I'm gonna let them catch up a bit to so. Yes, they're, I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna assume they're right here at the yeah. edge of that uh, of that of that turn. Yeah, and then I'm gonna sneak up and uh, just take a look, and once again, just check it out to make sure that there's nothing that would be following behind us. Sure. All right. So it's, it's when you look into this room. Um, you see that the this is actually these are actually hallways, and they seem to be lined with uh, crumbling stone tables and shelves. Uh, and on those tables and shelves are very finely made, uh, and you can tell that they're dwarven just by the quality of them. Uh, they're anvils, whetstones, tongs, hammers, chisels, all kinds of mining, blacksmithing tools, stone workers' tools. Um, you know, wood work. You know, some. Uh, uh, hammers and uh, there seems to be a bunch of nails and some woodworking tools, saws, just all kinds of tools here. I'm going to quietly sneak down to the hall or to see what's down that little hallway and uh, making sure there's here? nothing. Yeah, right there. Uh, this turns into a T-junction, just more of the same shelves and tables with tools. They're all very high quality. Okay, I'm just going to basically sneak my way around and see if there's anybody here or anything else. I'm going to go down this hallway to the okay. south. Check that Nothing. out. Nothing. Nothing. And then down further the hallway. When you get here on this wall, this west wall right here, okay. uh, there seems to be another uh, of the gates here. This one is not the uh, mirror style like the one you found before. This one is an arch gate. So it literally in the wall seems to be an arch. And uh, 
the into the uh, in the middle of the arch is the depiction and image of a dead tree. All right. I'm going to just ignore that for now to continue looking south. Okay. You can continue south. You can even turn the corner. More mm-hmm. the same. Okay. Um, do... Okay, so is there anything made... You said there are carpenter tools, so is there anything made of wood here? Uh, yeah. I mean, so several of the tools have wooden ha- handles. Okay. I just see if uh, putting the wood into the part where it looks like it's a dead tree the alcove if it does anything just because weird magic stuff sure uh you take kind of like grab a hammer by the handle and put it against the the arch nothing happens okay i'm going to sort through all the uh high craft stuff and specifically since uh we have had the issue now of a wall appearing and get things to uh that we would be able to possibly break down a wall with you said there's stone working stuff, so maybe something that, you know, actual, like, hard chisel and such. Sure. Uh, you can get a couple pickaxes here. Uh, you could get what is essentially uh, like uh, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, mechanically wise, it's a war hammer, but is just a giant hammer made for demolishing. Um, and also, uh, any artisan tools that you'd want to get here, uh, you can. So, like, if you wanted to get a set of carpenter's tools, a set of masonry tools, woodworking, like, you know, any any artisan's tool you can get here if you wanted. Okay. I inform everyone else that uh, there's a bunch of stuff here so that they can take their pick and also so that they can check out the archway if they have a... if they think it's anything or if it's just an archway. So Shadow sneaks back, kind of calls down the all clear, and you guys can... If, if you're so inclined, you can come in here and look at the a magnificent and again th- this it's not very common to see this amount of dwarven made tools in one spot and their craftsmanship is it's on parallels um and the fact that they make such good tools and then that turn around and make such amazing works of art and uh, masonry and things like that just it kind of all builds on one another and that's why they are you know maybe gnomes can get it close to their level of craftsmanship but dwarves are unparalleled And like I told Shadow, if any of you wanted a full set of artisan's tools, you can get you can get one here. Uh, and then you also have Shadow will point out the arch to you. That's at the far end of the hallway. I want the hammer. Okay. Uh, right. So you you would have you can mark off that you have a war hammer now. Yay! Oh wait, these are weapons? No, no. But, but there is a tool in here that essentially would equate to a warhammer. Oh, okay, a warhammer pickaxe. Uh, which I, just I do you know, I do not do manual labor. Uh, which just you know, a warhammer is a martial weapon, which fighters can use martial weapons. Um, and it's just it's just like a long sword. It does one d8 if you use it with one hand, or one d10 use it with two hands. Except the damage is bludgeoning. <laughs> Actually, so I gotta too. come up with a name for this one. Well, as far as the tools go, I'll get some uh, smithy tools or tinkerer tools. Something that, uh, you know, minor repair work type thing. Plus, you know, they're probably expensive. They're dwarven made. So you said you're going to pick up a set of smithy tools? Smith- smithing yeah. tools? Okay, and not a problem. Anybody else want anything from here, or uh, you want to do an experimenting with the arch, or you're all good? I I'd like to check out the arch. Okay. That that way. That's that way. Uh, yes, it's uh, right here, on this wall. I saw a token creep up behind me. I was like, oh my god, it's a monster. <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> Who 
is that? <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, look at the arch. No problem. Once again, you see uh, it's, it's a very large arch that goes from the bottom of the, the to the floor to the top of the wall. And uh, there's an image of a dead tree in the center. Oh, interesting. Can I roll religion to uh, inspect it? Not so much religion. You can give me arcana. It's, it doesn't. This doesn't seem to be a religious carving or a religious symbol of any sort. It is just a straight. It's just just someone. It's like someone took uh, the time to meticulously depict a dead tree. Okay, my arcana is really low, but I'm gonna roll it anyhow, just just in case I happen to get a good one. Sure. Inspiration might strike you. Three. Oof. Not so much. Inspiration did not <laughs> strike me. I'm like, oh. It's a, like you know for sure, like you already, you, you can already tell, like you, you know for sure that this is one of Halster's gates that allows him to oh. freely move between the levels of the dungeon, and you know that each gate requires something to activate. Um, not sure what it is for this one. It is, and yes, the tree is very detailed. If it wasn't dead, it'd be a very pretty tree, and even in death, it's kind of pretty. You know, death has its own beauty the cycles of nature you know winter when everything goes underground and wow i feel so much closer to the earth already right just a little bit okay i'm done all right i walk out <laughs> anybody else fresh would like to uh see this war hammer that everybody keeps talking about uh izzy currently has it Oh, Izzy, you have it. Oh, okay. If, uh, if you want it, you can have it. I am okay. curious. Can I take a look at it? Yes. Oh, it's fantastic, Meg. Hmm. And you say if there you are really tools want it, here. you can have it. It's okay. I don't mind oh, sharing, because sharing is caring. And that's what you do with your second best friend. Okay, I tell you, I I will happily put this away. This seems like a kingly gift. Thank you. And uh, I'll just get like a pair of tongs. Okay. And an axe. Because these uh, are fancy. not not really an axe back there. Okay. Pair of tongs and a blacksmith's hammer. He he would be interested in these things. Okay. And yeah. Just both both of those are very. Both of those are easy enough to find in there. Several of them. Oh yes, these seem to be very well made. Hmm. Anything what? Anything useful for a druid? Uh, not really. If not. It's all good. <laughs> Nothing that kind of sticks out towards you. Are there lockpick tools I can use to replace? No, <laughs> no, no thieves tools back there. <laughs> I don't worry uh, about it. tools are fine. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the hallway continues east, Shadow. I will continue sneaking down the hallway. All right. And you want me to roll perception and stealth again? Yeah, since we just kind of had that little uh, break there, you can uh, roll both those again. Let's see if I'm a little bit quieter. <clears throat> oh, oh yeah. yeah. You uh you blend into your namesake and you are almost you're almost invisible. Uh 23 perception. Yeah. All right. Almost Way had forward. two nat twenties. <laughs> Way forward seems clear. All right. And you are confident you are unseen, I, unheard. I got the swagger again, but this time it's quiet. Yes. You're doing your little uh, your little happy rogue dance, but this time it's a silent happy rogue dance. And you're actually able to all make it all the way down here. Awesome. It's a, it's a long hallway. All right. And then I once again glance down past, see in here. See that it goes either south or west. All right. I wait until the party is able to hit the end of the hallway, and then I'm going to go to the south. 
You want me to roll okay. another stealth? No, we'll keep using the same ones before. You haven't really, you haven't, you haven't oh, come in I'm, contact I'm really... with anything, so no, right. we'll use the same things before. Okay. I'm going to head down that way and see. Okay, it continues on. I'm going to keep on slowly creeping and letting the party get down to like about here before I start going here. Another long hallway. Another long hallway. Creep, creep, creep. Creep, creep. Creep until once again the corner. And as you come, you would take this corner as a rogue. Yeah. You stop, you stop yeah. Here. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, as you come to that corner, you are briefly stuck and struck with fear and your worst nightmares come true. Xanathar himself has come down into this dungeon. But then you blink. Wait, no, that's not Xanathar. But it is a beholder. I quickly count how many eyes it has. Uh, it's got, it looks to be four working eyes, like four eyes, four, Four of the tentacles have eyes. There are more tentacles, but they don't have eyes at the end. How many tentacles total? Uh, about 12. 12. Okay. Now I have a new answer next time they ask me how many <laughs> eyes <laughs> Genethar has. <laughs> oh, boy. I wait until everyone gets up to let them know. Well, I wait. Guys, I, 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 I sneak a little bit back and then let them come so that way they can still be a little bit loud but not heard and let them know. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, maybe we should go the other way because there's. You know what guild I'm a part of? Y you know how it's. Santa the Beholder? Yeah. There's, it's a little broken, but there's one down there. You're beholden to a beholder. <laughs> uh, Not funny. Uh, as Not he funny. says that, all of you are able to know uh, beholders are just one of those creatures from, from legend and from the stories. Every great hero seems to have fought one at some point in their lives, and uh, you are you know that they are quite deadly masters of manipulation of magic and the arcane and they have the ability to terrify petrify paralyze destroy disintegrate confuse befuddle levitate magic doesn't seem to work when they when they look at someone they are fearsome foes and even the strongest mightiest heroes have to be very clever when they fight them Shadow, you also did see when you were kind of looking, scouting the room for that couple seconds before you decided we should talk about this. The beholder itself was floating near the ceiling, which was about 20 feet high. And painted on that beholder around its central eye um, was a circle. And coming out from the circle were 10 equidistant spokes radiating out, radiating out from the center. You know this is Xanathar's symbol. Wait, that one has ten spokes. Wait, does that mean... You quickly okay. think it's possible that not all beholders are built the exact same way. Yeah, okay. Okay, if that's it... Okay, maybe it's eleven then. Okay, ah, uh, okay. But he's part of... Okay, let's try this. Okay, guys, I might die. Give me, a, uh, give me an insight check. Please don't die. <clears throat> and that one. Your line of thinking on the password is you're pretty sure about it. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna say, okay, you guys, I might die. This might work. I might die. I think this and is a bad I, idea. I slowly walk down and I wave my you know the part of my cloak that has the Xanathar symbol and I say 11 
so you but you are brandishing your your xanathar yes. symbol on your cloak yes it had been like almost as if held in stasis and kind of like from a from a movie any sci-fi movie where something is in stasis and it slowly spins on its axis so you can it, and that's how it was acting it was just slowly spinning around the room looking at things but as you come in you know making yourself known it rapidly spins so that its eye is on you. And you notice that the main eye of it is sickly. It's missing its pupil. It's... I'm much happier about this beholder now. You've heard Xanathar, as all beholders, do not take kindly to any other beholders. They are extremely jealous and super paranoid. Uh, it's a miracle that Xanathar is able to run a thieves guild where everything revolves around secrecy because he's 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 constantly paranoid and it's almost it's a blessing and a curse to be promoted in Xanathar's guild because the higher up in the hierarchy you are, the more likely Xanathar is to think that you're plotting against him and he might try to take you out. So mid level is about where you want to be in Xanathar's guild. Uh, you realize that the other beholders that Xanathar sniffs out, he destroys and then raises his zombies and uses them to serve in his army. To, smart, smart. To, to hold positions he wants to hold on to. And you, and you realize that that's what this beholder is. It is, not a, it is not a true beholder anymore. It is but a zombie and it is but a shell of its former self. You, you show the symbol it looks at you, and as it's looking at you, um, oh, it doesn't have that anymore. Come on, uh, you just kind of get the shiver down your spine, and you know that this would be a fearsome foe indeed. But it, it kind of just seems like almost if like his eye could zoom in, like it, you see it kind of spin around in its in its eyelid. It stops. And then just goes back to slowly spinning in a, you know, it's on its axis. You seem to have passed whatever test it had. Cool, cool. Uh, you I, do, you, you, you wait a second, you listen, and you, you hear what kind of sounds like a battle, but like there's not, there's not like shouts and screams and people going, oh, my leg. Uh, it just kind of sounds like. Uh, Someone's like maybe 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 people are training, coming from uh, further down west. Okay, uh, I, I I tell everyone, you know, should be good with. We might need to actually make your symbols since Cal's not here to press to digitate them. I can do that. able to very clearly describe to the group what the symbol looks like um and then one person who wants to make all the symbols for everyone will need Mm. to give me a uh give me a uh a performance check using uh using dexterity oh crap a performance check using, using dexterity. dexterity. Yes. So to... if you are proficient in performance, you would get the proficiency bonus, but then you would use your dexterity modifier as opposed to your charisma modifier. As you are trying to make this symbol and pass it off as legitimate, but it would it requires the fine detailing and dexterity of the hand to do this performance. I could uh, give you guys a plus four. That's it. I'm so going to cast speak with animals on cow okay finally <laughs> i like it speak with animals uh wow Duration with that I, I would only have plus five uh but two of us are going to need to do it well i was going to say one person could make all of it for you they can only make three what do you mean Press the digitation. You can only do three at a time. Oh, I I was gonna like you're make like the person would be making like actual symbols. Yeah. Like, someone oh. would be taking like a piece of cloth or something and making the actual symbols that you could like attach it to your chest or something. Yeah. And uh, uh, 
Dwayne, you could also give somebody inspiration for this. <laughs> Just to make so, sure we don't screw it up. Yeah, did, so you can't. Did, did anybody? I have presentation. Sewing, I just a sewing can't. kit. Nim, you can't speak with animals. The raven that is cow just kind of cocks its head and looks at you. <laughs> Why did you cast this? Obviously, you should have known. I didn't want to talk to anyone. Um, well, I, I figured maybe you could give us some advice on something. Oh, so the whole time on your shoulder, nearly drowned on your shoulder, you thought it would be good to now ask my advice. You didn't drown. You were fine. You're a little wet and soggy, but you're fine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you know how much birds enjoy being wet? Um, some of them really love about, being wet, like about swans these, and uh, ducks and geese and seagulls. Am I a swan or a duck or a goose or a seagull? No. I am a majestic raven. <laughs> See, the best part is only you can understand this, so I can't even make a smart-ass comment right now. Yeah, Nim is just kind of eyeing a lot. Ah, ah. It's starting to get a little loud with two with two raven caws going on. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, what really? was so important that you had to talk to me? Well, um, uh, so so Shadow had this idea, and and you know, it's creating the the well, okay, but there's there's a there's a zombie beholder in the other room, and Shadow has an idea, and Shadow. Your idea, and by the way, Nim forgot to switch back to people speak to talk to Shadow, so Nim is just calling at Shadow. She's they're they're looking straight at you. Call, 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 call. <laughs> Shadow just is looking back and says, "I. This is how they feel." Nim just shrugs and goes back to talking to Cal. Cal gives one of Cal's mighty sighs. <sighs> I really should have just gone back with sprouting hops. <sighs> if it was up to me, obviously Shadow is the one who has seen these symbols a million times in his life. He should just make a whole bunch more of them for you guys. Well, and then also Izzy has some prestidig prestid. The thing that makes Poppy doesn't good. like that word. <laughs> Beholders, even amongst the undead, are one of the most powerful magical creatures. Do you think a cantrip cast by a fighter is going to fool one of those? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess that would that would make sense. Okay, uh, handcrafting and it is. I had so much hope for you, especially after yeah. Densick disappointed me. <sighs> oh. Can, perhaps can, the new lizard. Perhaps the new lizard man will be better. And he actually flies off your shoulder, and he lands on Shirask's shoulder. Traitor! I, I'm just gonna look up after that and say, "Did he tell you to make it by hand?" Ah, uh, I mean, yes. Behold, oh, magic. Friend. Yeah, yeah. That was the reason why I didn't want prestidigitation. It looked uh -oh. at me. It's magic still. Um, oh, it, it's, was, oh. it's still it's still spooky woo. Well, okay, you you could have mentioned that to us instead of making Izzy feel left out. You're terrible. But someone knows how it, it feels. It's 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 kind of my Goodbye, job. Girlfriend. It's kind of my job. I'm supposed to poke fun. I mean, yeah, that is kind of like what brothers do. Oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. Okay, well, let's get to crafting. Can I use sequins? Yeah, are, are you going to make these or not? Yeah, all right. Give me five minutes. Can I, I help? Get... Some help? I'm just going to roll straight. We'll say, to, we'll, we'll say to get, uh, yeah, if you don't have proficiency in um, 
performance yeah. simulator would be a shared deck swap. And we'll say you can have advantage if the, if, since the team is working together. All right, cool. Okay, 20 cool. total. So Shadow works, and the first one he makes looks like a child. Maybe. The, the circle's all kind of squiggly. and Okay, throw that one in. Then he gets uh, uh, the pan that comes with a mess kit to cook on a stove, uh, like a makeshift fire you'd make out in the wilderness. And he uses that as a base, draws a circle from it, and then he draws the equidistant you know, lines out. Looks pretty good. He's able to quickly whip out four more of them, hands one to each of you. And uh, yeah. Don't lose it. Likely you'll abuse it. I'll tear this symbol forever. I pin it to my jacket. You've made us a Yule present early. Okay. Shrask just keeps it. Just going to hold it. He just holds Yes, he holds it. All right. All right. Everyone has their symbol of Xanathar. What's, what's the plan? Oh, once again, I'm going to walk in. Same Same thing as before. It's slowly spinning on its axis. Stops as soon as 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 it hears you and you identify yourself. Zooms in on your symbol. And just kind of goes back to spinning. Okay. I'm going to check the rest of the room and be like, it's working. I'm not dead. Walk here. Look who wants. Oh, there's people. Yeah. And you see, as you peer into that room, you see that like a kind of rough circle has been made and you see one person in the middle um, what looks to be a uh, a human female is just kind of circling around and there's a circle of uh, various bugbears and uh, you know human thugs and things like that and slowly, one by one, she's got to like, call them into the ring, and they they lightly box. And uh, she's going to be wiping the floor with most of them. I'm just going to keep walking this way and see if they notice me at all. Uh, everyone's attention is kind of really fixed in on uh, the fight. Okay, then... Uh... For the moment, I'm just going to check down here and see what's... Uh, is this door locked? Uh, that door is uh, not... Is... No, that door is not locked. I'm just going to open it quiet and see what's in here since they're all fixated on that and okay. might, not care what, might not care to talk to them. All right, I uh, go to here just to make the motion, you know, and stop again. Point at Cal and just be like, can you to them message? Because I think he actually understands a little bit of my lingo. Just opens his, he just opens his mouth and you're expecting a call and he just goes, <laughs> and then you, you swear if somehow feathers could form a middle finger, they do. <laughs> I laughed so hard I coughed. I walk back and say, do you want to f- talk to people or you just want to bypass these guys? <sighs> so Shadow kind of gets you guys to low down that there's... Bunch of guys over there, and you know them. They're all obviously they're more Xanathar people, um, or there's a door to the south. So basically, your choices are fight these people or try to sneak past them and go around them. If we're quiet, we can just walk down into the door and just keep going. Where does the door quiet, go? To? I can't believe I have to walk back here to tell you guys these things. Need well, you to could have told us to follow you. Yeah, I did. 
You guys he don't didn't. understand anything I ever tell you. Yeah, he tried to tell you guys to follow him in Thieves Camp. Yeah. I start trying to tell you these things, and then I look at my hands, and I'm just like, why do I bother? Why do I bother? You don't understand Thieves Camp. You don't understand even basic gestures. Like, come on. All right, then I, I just start to walk one? past him. I, I, I just start walking. <clears throat> no, I, you okay. picked up Cal, not a jester. No, no, no. Uh, the guy is silent. He just starts walking. Yeah, right, he, cool. he's showing. He stops. He goes. Once again, the beholder zooms in on you, Densick. Examines. It goes back like to slowly spinning. It goes back to slowly spinning. He's and just he's going south. Where are you going from there, Densick? Uh, he said, "Go to the door." So I'm walking south. <laughs> Densick right. was like, "Okay, go go." Is anyone gonna go get him, or are we just gonna stand when, here and wait till he starts when he's, screaming? When he gets to the beholder, I want to get to him and say quietly. Uh, you get to the door, Densick, and as you're walking past the opening uh, into the other room, like one of the thugs kind of like does the, but never turns around, doesn't see. You. You're able to make it to the door without without alerting anybody. He knows who it is. Find your business. <laughs> <laughs> All right, remind, who's next? I remind everyone else Dress quietly. Quickly. All right, is everyone else, is everyone else going to take the advice to go quietly? Indeed. Yes. Right. Angry friends say quietly. Everyone else roll. Everyone roll stealth checks. Oh God, this is not going to go well. Remember anybody who might be wearing heavy armor, you have disadvantage on stealth checks. Oh, I got a seven. Twelve. <laughs> Lots of good one numbers there. I got a seven. <laughs> okay. Twenty-five. So first things first, you all walk in. You all show your symbol. Whoa, 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 Shadow. Let's slow your roll there, buddy. All right. <laughs> Let's slow your roll there, buddy. Uh, you all show your symbols. The beholder examines all of them in turn. Goes back to spinning. Shadow would be first. You get about here. Nim is able to be uh, silent as well as round your tail. That's that's Sharask. Boop. Boop. Uh, Sharask and Izzy, though, as they're walking past the beholder, they're like looking up at it. This is the first beholder any of you have seen, but. You know, Izzy and Strassima, especially. Whoa. They're not paying attention. And Shiraz kind of like, like, takes like his foot wobbles on a stone he didn't see. And he kind of bumps into Izzy. And Izzy just falls face first on the ground, full plate armor, just. <laughs> and there's that moment where, like, it's silent, nothing's happening. And then. This guy right here just turns around. Oh, and what are y'all doing here? And uh, we'll pick up next week. As, <laughs> uh, you have been discovered. And uh, yeah, there's a nice little beholder zombie right here in striking range of all these people. <laughs> Should have just walked by with confidence. Right? Should have just really pulled <laughs> a Densic, you know. All right. So yes, that has been our episode this week. Thank you, adventurers. Now, the dungeon grows dark and your vision fades as the magic is spent and the scrying orb goes blank. We will have to wait till next week to see what happens to our adventurers. It has been a pleasure divining the story to you, listener. We hope you enjoyed what you saw and heard as much as and has much. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's late. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed what you saw and heard as much as we enjoyed performing it for you. Let's hear from our players now once again. Your name, handle, character, and where people can find you outside of Orpal Tales. Ah, yes, I am first. I always forget I'm first. This time. Uh, I have been Dwayne, and you can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi. The next time you will see me on Orpal Tales is Monday. For Conan. 
Uh, yes, and I am John. The next place I will be is on Onyx Path on Wednesday, so I'm looking forward to it. Hey, everybody. I've been Nim, and now I have gone back to Ever so fast you didn't even notice. You can find me in every single game that Vorpal Tales has to offer, and my next game will be on Sunday evening, so come hang out. Come check us out. It'll be fun. Hey, I'm Pinky. Uh, next time you can find me will be on Monday with Onyx Path, uh, playing as Captain Luciana the Red. Tonight, I'm ending my performance with Izzy, the Eldritch Knight, who is accidentally clumsy. Oops. <laughs> it wasn't really your fault. It was more uh, Shrass's fault, to be fair. Oh, what? He, he, bumped, he bumped into you. Izzy wouldn't blame second okay. best friend. She would take the fault. No, I mean, Shrash, she Shrash took the fault. Izzy. I, I apologize. And <laughs> I have been the Shadow thing. inhabiting the body of Devin. Uh, you can find me online at Sword of Sullied. And the next time I will be playing will be Tuesday where they can take in Chronicle. Thank you. I have been Patty Shakes underscore. There'll be another week before I can summon the ability within me to show you more of this dungeon. But in the meantime, I encourage you to watch Vorpal Tales' other shows, which include Sunday will be Terrifying Tales. Monday will be Conan. Tuesday will be the Contagion Chronicles. Wednesday will be the Pugmire Pot How the Pirates Stole Yule Time holiday. Thursday will be Alien the RPG. And for ending on Friday will be this show once again. Now, for the true fans, we shall vote. Our players will each nominate one other player, but new to Vorpal Tales, you, the audience, can vote for your favorite player as well. We shall tally the votes in chat after we sign off and award our players appropriately. So, in the same order we do our intros and outros, please nominate a fellow player and why. I, Densic, Rathano, vote for John. <laughs> Uh, for his ability to remember all friend numbers at a constant rate. Trask is thankful, and he gives his uh, vote to Ever uh, for almost breaking these tools. I'm, I'm going to have to give mine to Shadow for lending me said thieves tools. <laughs> normally, <laughs> normally he's really secretive with his tools and such, but uh, but Shadow's no been wet. very generous lately. No wet. Uh, the power of water overrules the tool shareage. Yes. Thank you. Tonight, I will give my vote also to Ever because that was pretty awesome. Like, absolute just letting your fate be decided by the dice. You know, this, this is fine. But Okay, I don't know how I did the thing, but I did the thing, and I'm just going to use the, the hilt of my knife as a hammer, and I'm just going to shove it in the thing, and oh, okay, wow, Shadow really just goes through these, like, like nothing. These are... How? Like you it's go me. through cookies. Exactly. It was absolutely adorable, and I loved watching it. And I hope we have many more moments similar for Nim, because it was really awesome. Also, I'm giving it to single-use thieves' tools. There's a reason why I have so many. <laughs> not, not for different locks or anything. No. That 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 can't be it. That, that no, no, no. That's silly. They're like potions. They all what look so done? similar. Welcome to the dungeon of the Mad Mage. If you call in right now, you get our brand new disposable single-use thieves' tools, very sanitary during this time of plague. <laughs> Sorry. You can leave them <laughs> in the door. That way, you don't have to touch them again. Yes, excellent. Very good. Thank you for all the votes. Once again, like I said, we'll tell you if any audience votes we get and award them accordingly to our players before our next session. And that brings us to the end of this session. So thank you all for sticking around this long. We appreciate you. We love you. And we'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay awesome, stay you.